This video is sponsored by Spell Rogue, your next deck building roguelike obsession from Guidelight Games and Ghost Ship Publishing. Available now in early access. Cast powerful spells with the mythical mana dice as you manipulate rolls to duplicate, split, flip, and enchant your cards with spell effects to bend fate to your will. Because Spell Rogue has deck building and dice rolling, and that's double the nerd thing. Experiment with dozens of legendary artifacts and hundreds of upgradable spells to build some truly wild combinations. And those will come in handy as you attempt to cleanse the land and annihilate the monstrous Void Walkers. Because let's be honest, voids are very dangerous and nobody should be walking anywhere near them. Head on over to Spell Rogue's Steam page to learn more about the game and join in on the early access adventure today. Because those mana dice ain't gonna roll themselves. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Firelake. My name is Michelangelo, the editor-in-chief of Second Wind, joined by KC and Frost. Oh, no. I am actually KC, and now KC is now me. Oh, no. I'm still <laughs> me, though. Marty is out of town tonight, so he is no, not long not long for this world hosting this podcast today. <laughs> what is that picture that Eric oh, just put up in this box? One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This happened on Windbreakers a bit ago. It's like... Wow. He, uh, he's in gamer prison. <laughs> he is in gamer prison. He uh, is busy doing something today. I don't remember what he was doing. He, he had to go somewhere. Take a uh, yeah, so we, uh, last week, of course, talked about all the <laughs> Xbox speculation that mm -hmm. was uh, it turned out to be a big nothing burger. Uh, but before we get to all that, of course, uh, Second Wind is fully funded by fans like you. So if you enjoy our podcasts, our shows, our streams, our, us as people, Maybe consider heading on over to Patreon and giving us even a dollar a month. It helps us pay our paychecks every month. But how are you guys doing today? I'm uh, I'm I'm specific, specifically very tired. I also just had ribs for dinner. So if I fall asleep during the podcast, that's my fault. Oh, he's a I, saucy boy. Uh, yeah, I made a very similar mistake. I had like a, a big ass chicken sandwich just before <laughs> sitting down here. And I feel slightly uncomfortable. Nah, but otherwise, I, uh, do it all right. I ate nice and light. Three three Big Macs, a twenty piece uh milkshake. Yeah. Nothing heavy. Twenty, 20 pieces of a milkshake? <laughs> twenty pieces of a milkshake. You yes. know, that's a <laughs> in McDonald's that's like fifty dollars now. Oh yeah, we have money now. No. I you know I was I, I don't was even go to McDonald's anymore, bro. That there's no dollar menu. I, what, what, yeah, there's I no can't. dollar menu. I it's not so selling I there, the the freaking orange high C and I, I boycotted them. <laughs> but then they brought it back, so I guess I, I need to come back. I went there a couple weeks ago and I somehow spent like $17 on like a McDouble, a ch like chicken nuggets and fried. I'm like, how, like how, how did I spend like $14 on this? And I'm so sure you didn't I, also buy drugs. Like there was like weed I, in a wrapper somewhere. A little bag <laughs> crack. Yeah, a little you know, crack if, if, <laughs> maybe. You got to check but, the bag, so, Nick, like with the fries full, you know? <laughs> What's on the fries? <laughs> Is it white yeah. powder <laughs> or salt? <laughs> it's not sugar, it's sugar fries. <laughs> uh, but I went back like a couple weeks later. I was like, there's no way. I, like I must have fucked something up. There's no way I spent $14 here. So I ordered my next set of things, $17. Like what? What is happening here? <laughs> so I'm now, sorry. It was actually 20. You're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, what the, I'm, you know what? I'm never going to McDonald's again. You're going to charge me that much. I'm just going to get a good burger from somewhere. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Sharky Bunny, welcome to Tip Jar. And Joseph Isham, $2 as Marty fell into the void in the ad. He's MIA in real life. Yeah, he, he made that ad and he got sucked into it and he's just gone. Never see him again. Um, I yeah. think Jesse <laughs> made the ad. Well, just Jesse put him there for some reason. Then I, don't I know mean, what, I don't Marty, know Marty and Jesse, Marty and Voids go hand in hand. Like it, makes, <laughs> it tracks. All right. So, uh, as I was alluding to last week, we talked about the Xbox speculation. Which, uh, if you have any, if you have looked at my Twitter in the last few minutes, I tweeted out a bunch of uh, dumb YouTube thumbnails that have dumb-looking faces on them, going, "Oh my God, Xbox is dead!" And the entire Twitter and internet were blowing up over Xbox going full multi-platform and dying and all this other bullshit and the podcast announcements seem to have happened uh, while we were streaming hell divers to defending democracy. <laughs> and it turns out it was a big nothing burger. And basically pretty much everything I said last week is exactly what happened. They're staying in the console business. 
they're making their next big next gen platform, which will be the biggest next gen bump you have ever seen, according to them. I'll believe that when I see it, whatever yeah. that means. Uh, four, four unconfirmed, mostly confirmed <laughs> games are going multi platform. The rumor, the leak, and pretty much the assumption is Hi Fi Rush, Pentiment, Sea of Thieves, and Grounded. Diablo 4 is coming to Game Pass on March 28th. And that was it. That was it. There's yeah. no, like, Game Pass the rumors. Diablo? Yeah, Game Pass Diablo. I'm but the, rumor, yeah, the rumors now. were that Starfield was going to PlayStation. Indiana Jones was confirmed for PlayStation. And Gears of War and all these other games and all these influencers and speculation and all this baloney blew this thing up. And Xbox is like, okay, like, we, we got to get in front of this and we got to do a podcast, basically, or whatever the fuck they want to do to get this messaging straight because there's so much rampant speculation and rumors. And yeah, it's like, just... so, like, supposedly this started because of data mining, right? Like, someone was looking at stuff they weren't supposed to in the first place and found out that Hi Fi Rush was essentially going to be going to like the Switch or something in the future. And then that kind of snowballed into just panic because the idea that Xbox, I guess, would leave the market entirely and become like this sort of third party publisher really kind of throws the like the gaming community at large to the wolves because Sony and Nintendo are so anti consumer focused. Like I, I get the fear, but like, yeah, it was full on panic mode and no one had any solid information to go off of when all this was coming out. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty mild information based on what came out of the it's, it, there's nothing surprising here like i i said it last week there's no reason for xbox as an ecosystem to go away it makes no sense to build all this up get all those people in the game pass subscriptions 34 million now according to the recent up, the update today mm -hmm. there, there's no logical explanation to get rid of xbox as a brand and just go as a third-party publisher that never made sense to me Leaving the console business, why? They still sell millions of consoles. They don't have to be the front runner. They can still sell millions of consoles. Yeah, Xbox has been profitable for Microsoft. Like, despite them being in a very far last place in terms of, like, the big platform yeah. holders, Microsoft in, uh, you know, a silo is, on their is, own, it's still a Xbox big profitable? arm. I believe it is. That's well, I mean, maybe if you, if you look at the fact Ooh, that they just spent, like, numbers. $70 billion, like, yeah. maybe not by those metrics but the fact that they would give them 70 billion dollars to spend kind of tells you like this is a big portion of their business mm -hmm. so like I, I yeah i agree like they're not looking to kind of get out of gaming like some people were suggesting like that always seemed weird to me as a narrative yeah um, i shouldn't have taken the bait though like what's stopping me from making a youtube channel it just a bunch of misinformation to try and bait like an answer out of them we're like oh yo new next gears of war is coming through sony there is but then it's going to go straight to Xbox like three days before. Well, uh, the, the, the reason this stuff happened, like I'm going to, uh, with my video series unpacked, I'm going to kind of get into how some of this stuff dis like kind of disseminates across the board. But like a lot, what a lot of these influencers do is like Jeff Grubb or Steven Totillo or uh, Tom Warren, whatever. These, these big name journalists will basically say on their podcast or in a news bit or a, a newsletter or something like, I heard so and so are thinking about there's a possibility that Indiana Jones might go multi multi platform. There's a possibility that Gears of War, and basically influencers take that and go, "Oh my God, it's going to happen! It's going to happen because so and so said it so, and I know better." And all this bullshit. And it's like just because you heard something doesn't mean it's happening. <laughs> like, and that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. Like, it, but on the other hand, too, like I, you know, I. Uh, on, my, on my Twitter feed this evening, like pointed out like Paul Tassi going like, it's a, it's incomprehensible that Xbox didn't say in their podcast today that the, w what four games are coming to multi-platform. And it's like, you, how long have you been covering games, man? Like, don't you re fucking realize like they probably have a marketing deal with PlayStation or Sony to announce these things at their own time and their own place of choosing. Like it's a game being sold on their platform. They get to decide when they want to market it. <laughs> yeah, I wish, I wish Phil would get in his face a little. It's incomprehensible. He's like, Paul, you know better than this. Yeah. <laughs> you know why, good and well why we did it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I, you know, this. I mean, if you, if, if you watched the, like the podcast, uh, it, it is a very buttoned up corporate speak type of thing. Like it, it's, it has this framework of being this kind of casual address to like the fans who are worried. 
but it is very like hitting talking points and like marketing uh buzzwords and like like halfway through we got kind of like a pitch about like the future of game pass and like the future of mm -hmm. xbox hardware or whatever like this is this is almost word for word what you would get uh if you were like an investor or a, or a stakeholder in the company to kind of shore you up in case you were worried about pulling your funds out to go invest in like uh the nfl or something <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the goalposts have now moved though is like now everybody's mad that they didn't announce you know the games that are going multi-platform and it's like who the fuck cares if you have xbox you probably already played these games if you don't have xbox then great you get more games to play like what's the big deal <laughs> it has no impact on you as an xbox consumer that these games are, would be going to playstation or whatever just like hell divers 2 had no impact on anybody playing it on playstation on it going to pc other than more people got to play it and now mm -hmm. that studio has to hire more people to get the content out faster because people love it so much like they, they actually made really good points in their discussion about how the four games that they are choosing to go multi-platform like how it's a good idea for their business like mm -hmm. they're giving like bigger player bases uh to these especially the live service games that are rumored to be coming out um and and in, in general, any developer who makes a game wants the biggest number of people to play that game. This was something that after they acquired Bethesda, um, Bethesda was upset about that, like they were kind of getting retroactively certain titles not being allowed to be multi-platform because they thought they'd be able to pick and choose. Like they thought they'd get to keep that. Mm -hmm. This kind of opens the doors back up for that studio who was, uh, you know, multi-platform beforehand to be like, hey, can we make a game that will be multi-platform? Like it'll probably make sense for Xbox to allow them to do that again. Yeah. Well, I've, and I, you know, I think I've continued to said since the early days of Breakout, like it does not make sense for a multiplayer game, multiplayer focused game to be exclusive anymore. Yeah, it true. does not. When you have a live service, you need a big player base to keep it funded, keep it going. You need as many people as possible playing that game. <laughs> so see if these going multi-platform. Absolutely. Should be free to play too if it's not already. I don't remember if it is. But. Damn, son. <laughs> uh, I don't think it is because of the whole, you know, it's a multiplayer thing and then uh xbox game pass is tied to their multiplayer thing so like you kind of just got it if you were in the xbox ecosystem i do wonder if when it goes to because that is one of the ones rumored like no one has confirmed it but that is one of the big ones rumored to be going multi-platform if that one does go i'm curious if it will also become free to play at that point because like yeah. what what is there to lose like they're i don't think they're selling any more new copies to see if these no no I think they'll make a hell of a lot more money off microtransactions off that than they would trying to sell it as a premium game on PlayStation or Switch. Is that is that game something you think like PlayStation players would be into? Like, yeah, I think so. I, honestly, like it's it's got that survival. I mean, it's not you know it's it's a more in depth I think than a survival crafting game, but uh, it's got a lot of those elements that you know kids really like, especially uh, which game? Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Very very um... friend oriented game and. That's for that. that's for bros, man. Like twenty year twenty five year olds getting <laughs> off work. Like, yeah, let's go get drunk on this ship. Cause you can't, it's just <laughs> too expensive to be in a bar nowadays. It's just, yeah. it's a time for <laughs> online bars to be back. Yeah, but it's just sort of I, I don't know, this whole this whole tribalism instead of they're shooting themselves in the foot just to say, Hey, my piece of plastic is better. If you, your games that you love, especially if you're playing multiplayer, which are some of the biggest titles out there right now, you want as many people on them as possible. So why would you gate off a portion of the community? You could probably still even do that that setting where it's like, no, nah, cross platform off. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's to yeah, me, that's like, like people, about, yeah, people want, you know, especially the Xbox crowd. You want more high quality first party games, then I want more people buying the games that they make so that they get more funds to make better and bigger games. Like, yeah, <laughs> exclusivity doesn't it just doesn't do anything. And people are like, well, what reason would I have to buy an Xbox? Well. People don't want to put a computer in their living room. And if the game's available on PlayStation, then great. But as we said last week, like it's different. It's different now than it used to be. Like if you're on Xbox and you've been with Xbox since Xbox One, hell, even Xbox 360, you have a whole digital library in there. You have a whole ecosystem of friends, most likely. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot, it's a much bigger deal to switch from Xbox to PlayStation or PlayStation to Xbox now than it used to be. Like you don't just sell your games and your your physical copies of games anymore and then just restart. You lose a lot of money and investment. Yeah, that could be a big reason uh, among several others, like why Sony has dominated for so long. 
uh, is because, yeah, like in that era where the digital library was becoming a thing, like Sony was the clear front runner and winner. Like they were doing everything the consumers wanted. Uh, and so they really? built their library on that platform. Well, I mean, they were doing most of the stuff the consumers wanted. Really? Because the, they don't really have much, if any, backwards compatibility from PS2 well, I mean, to PS3 to PS4. Things. Yeah, like that one, that was a, that was a misstep on them for <laughs> yeah. sure. But, like, but people, people chose what they wanted. Like, we, like Sony was by far the favorite last generation. And so going into this yeah, new one, like people generation. wanted to hold, yeah, people wanted to hold on to yeah, that library. So like, it really didn't it's matter what club. Xbox said. Well, it was, you, you couldn't hold on to the library. Well, PS4 to PS5, yeah. Uh, I keep forgetting we're looking at PS5. But yeah, PS, right, right, yeah, yeah I was going to say, because Xbox 360 was way more consumer friendly than PS3. Oh, PS4. Oh, I, I, I agree with you. Though, I know. I agree with you. No, no. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is it, yeah, it's, yeah. it flip flopped every time from Xbox or PS2 to Xbox 360. Yeah, and it was, to PS3, it was easier to do PS4. that without that digital library following you. Yeah. Yeah, it's once we got to the X the X bone, where it's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. Sony's got the heads up, and then after that, it's like, okay, it's just Sony the whole way here. Yeah, and Nintendo, despite I think, I think a lot not of leverage, any of that stuff. Yeah, a lot of leverage might have been lost with like me when Xbox kind of dropped the ball. I didn't go to Sony; I went to PC, and a lot of my friends mm. who were on Xbox also just was like, you know what, we might as well just go to PC at this point. So, it's all coming back. They're following me. <laughs> Sony's coming back. <laughs> I'm waiting for Nintendo to come back. I feel like that's like you, that pivot is a much smaller subsection than just the average yeah, Joe. It is. It is. So, so like, so yeah, if friend, you do, yeah, they still have consoles, <laughs> <laughs> they have huge PCs, but they're like, I bought a nice couch and I, I need, I'd rather have the console for it. And now funny enough, even though it was PlayStation because of the better exclusives, like Casey was saying, like straight up, they had the culture, right? But uh, mm. now with Xboxes being uh, more like cross-platform and the Game Pass being so good, the uh, Xbox Series S is looking very, very tasty, very juicy. That library that sticks with you, even though these games can disappear at any moment, uh, you kind of want to sort of have a legacy, like a library as before, because physical just doesn't mean a damn anymore. Yeah, and that, that's what makes Game Pass so freaking attractive is like you buy into a library. Like you don't have mm -hmm. to start from scratch when you jump into that ecosystem. But like people don't, people still don't want to leave. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a big subsect of people who don't, um, who don't feel comfortable being a multi-console household. Like they just aren't comfortable with that. Like they're going to spend money at the start of a generation and pick one or the other. Like there's that no, there's no point where they go. All right, well, let me just get the other ones. So I can get whatever they got, have going for them. They're like, nope, this is the one I picked. I'm done. I don't know. Maybe I'm. I'm not sure. Um, that's what it feels like. <laughs> I, I think. I think that's online culture mostly. I think, I think that is some clinically online. Yeah, I think <laughs> most most people just see. Okay, these are the games I want to play. Here's the platform I want to play them on, or their platform that their friends are on. And even that, even with multiplayer games, like even that isn't like now. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people might even choose their console just based on which controller you like more because half, half the big multiplayer games are cross-play now. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So what does it matter? Most, yeah, this you is a Sony Discord, household. You know, yeah, you have Discord on PlayStation and Xbox now, so you don't even need to use their party functions. Like, I don't know. It's all it's also connected. Like, I, I, Phil Spencer said on the thing today, like, he thinks exclusives are going to matter less and less as yeah. time goes on. I agree. Like, I fully agree with that. I just like, uh, what do you call it? Exclusivity and tribalism that matters when there is territory that you're trying to buy up territory mm -hmm. that you're trying to gain. We have, uh, and I'd said this in a cold take at the old place. We're just kind of gone past the point of like, let's buy up as much territory and land. Now it's just like a race to see who's got the next one. It's like Civ, right? You've, you've conquered everything on the map. Now let's, let's see who's going to win through either tech or through culture. I feel like Sony was getting the, uh, the culture, way better than xbox and now xbox is like fine we'll cut them off in the cloud <laughs> we're going <laughs> to the future baby <laughs> and now it's like oh well, we're willing to play but sony doesn't want to they don't want to play with us they don't want multi-platform but that's because they're winning right it's because exactly. it's because exactly. they are but so far that's out not sensible to the consumer if you're thinking like yeah why why would sony play with you they're better than you right but Ooh. still it, to everyone who's like i just want to play with my friend that's all i care about sony mm -hmm. like, i don't the, care if you're winning uh, with the CEO of uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment, like literally just wasn't there like just a news quote this week about him saying like, yeah, our, our internal studios had to be better about business. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, 
I feel like I feel like in this day and age, you're just you're just losing out on customers if you don't put your games as as, as many places as possible. Right. So like, so what is the big holdup? Because we 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 all know deep in our hearts that Nintendo, if they ever decide to do this, they will be by far the last. Like it'll be like five years after everyone else has has decided that this is the oh, wave I that they join in. So Nintendo, like, what is the holdup? Nintendo's its own thing. Like Nintendo is not chasing the eight year well unless it's metroid prime 4 but the eight year development cycle <laughs> <laughs> for these massive massive games yeah. with the highest end graphics and all that stuff like they know their audience they know their audience is going to be that whether it's nintendo 3ds or switch or switch 2 or whatever they know their audience is going to pick stick with nintendo like that is yeah. the i think out of all the fan bases that is the most loyal fan base to I, they release a certain type of game they like and those are the games they want to stick with PlayStation, PlayStation, like even even PlayStation's changing. Like Helldivers Two is the first first party exclusive they had to launch day and date with PS Five and PlayStation or uh, PC. Mm -hmm. And look at look at the sales. Like it's it had two hundred thousand concurrent players yesterday. So clearly, Damn. like clearly that's a lot more uh, a lot more sales than that game would have got on just the PS Five. So I bet they're looking at that, especially the money hats are like, hmm, what if yeah, we, in particular what, for what their live we... service stuff, yeah. Yeah, well, even their single player stuff. Like, what if we just, you know, put our game on another platform day and date? Maybe we get more sales right out of the gate because of all the hype. <laughs> and the social. I, don't know, I, f I feel like they'd be, because, like, going off of, like, their track record, like, they have been so hesitant to branch, to, like, to, in their minds, they're devaluing their exclusive, like, uh, like, their, their big $70 premier titles, right? If it's not just on that platform, it feels like they can't justify the it's cost not, of it's it. not no it's not devaluing it's just saying if you want to play this you have to spend the 500 dollars to play it uh, <laughs> that's what they're saying <laughs> nintendo is just like its own thing I, I don't even know how to describe them because i feel like yeah sony sony earned the culture nintendo's made a dynasty right like even if the next console's a flub people are still gonna buy that one whereas if sony get, gets a few duds then it's like all right xbox time Nintendo is just in its own lane selling toys. <laughs> I don't know yeah, they, what they did. They they won long term. They are the elves of Lord of the Rings. What what Nintendo did? Well, they're was, they're just the family friendly console. Like every like they every they solidified console. their position as a secondary console. So yes, yes. Like they somehow made it so that they are always in the conversation, but kind of just in the shadows like above the, the like the the brawl fest that is xbox and sony so whenever those guys have beef it doesn't matter who wins because right after the next purchase is a nintendo console because it's nope. in the right price point and they have all the games that you absolutely have to play right like i feel like part of that is why maybe they're like it doesn't it doesn't do them any good to go multi-platform because it doesn't matter what anyone else actually buys as their first console that same customer is going to get a nintendo console I think Nintendo does die if they if they let go of their exclusives, at least in the gaming <laughs> side of things, because that's the only thing right oh, now. Yeah, because uh, PC and a Switch, my yeah, friends, I mean, Xbox yeah. or or PlayStation and whatever Nintendo is cracking out. It's, if it's I, just uh, that secondary slot. Yeah, if I can get all my Switch exclusives on my uh, Steam Deck and play them at you know acceptable frame rates, <laughs> 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 then I would drive drop kick that Switch out the window. <laughs> like, would you? Well, I'm, this this is probably a dumb question asking you guys because we work in this industry. But I feel like if Nintendo was like, "All right, we're just gonna pump a bunch of R and D into the next handheld version of a Switch," and now it actually runs the way like some of these you know competitors do now, but you have the added benefit of Nintendo class uh, exclusives. Like, would that price out like average Joe's, or would would they eat in terms of the hardware and now the software? No, I would I would never switch to Nintendo for like my. Yeah, main. as a main, is that what you're telling me? No. Yeah, like if, if no, Nintendo no. was like, all right, they're, we're, they're we're this race for real now, as opposed to being like this. Nah. Sort of, their see, online infrastructure is still 20 years old. I think you, <laughs> you, def you, definitely hit, you definitely hit on it that it is it is secondary. It is not a primary meat. It's bacon, mm -hmm. right? It it needs something else to hold up with it. So no, nah, even if they just pumped it all out, had had the hardware, you, you couldn't you couldn't see me on that. Absolutely not. Yeah, that when their when their store takes ten minutes to load, you you, you ain't getting me on their <laughs> primary console. Everything's so slow until it's time to whip out the card, and then like boom, boom, <laughs> yeah. there you go, no load. Swipe that card again. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, elevated music in the chat says, literally no reason I own a console. Yes, there is. People that want to put a fucking PC on their, their TV. Yeah, it's ugly. <laughs> this, this mindset is stupid. I'm like, sorry. I, it's just yeah. dumb. I, I don't. I have my computer. I to use my computer on my TV. I had to drill holes in my ceiling and run an HDMI cable out to my living room. You didn't have to do that, did is you? Is that bad for the PC to like hook it up to a, a big ass TV? I know you have a big TV. No, why? Why would it be bad for? It's just another monitor. I'm just wondering. I'm not tech savvy. Yeah, I, I use oh, TVs. No. My no, it's not bad at all. It's not bad. Okay, because no, I just didn't want to lug my PC out there. Fair. No, it's so fair. just had my friend's brother drill holes in my ceiling and run a wire. <laughs> Steam Link is a thing. I don't want to do it over wire, a wireless connection. All Steam Link's also a little finicky. My my PC, I, I could sell my consoles now. Like if PlayStation brought all their exclusives to PC, I could sell both my consoles and be perfectly fine because uh, the PS5 controller has really good Bluetooth and I can connect it directly to my computer from 20 feet out there and I play games on my TV through my computer like I would any other console. It's great. I love it. Yeah, Berber Fermi is with a great point, though. Says, why bother with a TV when you can just play on a computer? True. I don't want to be in this office, though. <laughs> yeah. I got a really nice setup down there, and, and yeah, the PC is just in the way. So just yeah. throw a tiny little box that barely whistles when you turn it on. Boom. Right in this. I see. And, and uh, also, people don't want to, not a lot of people, not a lot of console primary players want to play on PC because all they hear about all the time is this game is unoptimized and doesn't work. When you put a game into a console, 99.9% .9 of the time it works. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's just a plug and play machine. PCs are set up and play and nobody wants to do that. And, and even I don't. As someone who's been on PC <laughs> yeah. for 10 years, I was changing out my graphics card. It takes five minutes to change out a graphics card, but it took me an hour because I was constantly looking yeah. at Reddit threads of like, did I put this upside down? Will I fry my shiz? You know, like, it's just too much. It's just too yeah. much. It's about is it, oh man, the stress when you never have to like open your PC back up and like fix something. Like, what if you just brick it? <laughs> <laughs> I am, I, I am uh, thousands I, of dollars I, down the drain. I'm always terrified of like this. There's this little tiny prong, and that thing's gonna snap, and my entire computer is shot. <laughs> oh, my God, it's like delicate yeah, it's like, little princess of a PC. Yeah, Mission <laughs> Impossible. Like, make sure my sweat doesn't hit it. Yep. Ugh. Absolutely. Meanwhile, you could like yeah. drop kick a switch down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it, my my ceiling it rained through. My house flooded, and it went straight onto my Xbox 360. And I, I oh, can no. hear the water. I even turned it sideways, and it went. Shh. And I plugged <laughs> yeah. her in later on after it dried out, and it was running fine. Wow, 100. percent It's just nothing. clean on the inside now. Nice. Oh yeah, it's no, not that dirty roof. Nice. Walk. Going nice. back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> going back to all that Xbox stuff. I just yeah, I'm excited to make that unpacked video and just show like how. Like where this rumor started, where the influencers pulled it and took it, and then boom, it's like it was, this whole fucking firestorm. Yeah, it was exactly for us. I, like, I just I'll, love spreading misinformation on the internet. And then and then and then kind of funny stole our title of our podcast from last week today. Well, I'm I'm sure they don't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure too. I'm I'm almost positive Greg Miller knows who none Hi, of us are. <laughs> <laughs> we see you stealing our work. <laughs> Drive like safe. I want to, I want to admit, like a uh, completely original title. <laughs> like I'm excited to see uh, Nick's video on all of this discourse, but I'm worried, Nick, that you are spending too much time looking at this sort of discourse, and it is not healthy for you. No, I, 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 uh, 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 I muted. I did what I said I was going to do. I muted uh, the term no. Xbox for the entire week until today. <laughs> I didn't want to see any of it. I unmuted it today, and I'm like, this is it. That's it. We, we this entire internet blew up over this. It's stupid. I'm this glad I didn't waste what, any yeah, time worrying about this. This is why I just follow <laughs> rugby players on Twitter now. You know, <laughs> why? No, why rugby? <laughs> just just they, watch they, don't, rugby. they don't care about rugby? console wars. Uh, <laughs> and most of the world does. It is the third most watched event in the entire world. And when did that happen? I don't understand the rule. It's been the thing. World Cup's number one, obviously. Rugby, I think, is two or three. Olympics is like four. Super Bowl is like nine. You know, so what? I'm just there. I'm just there. It must yeah, have jumped. It's just America, this, Nick. It must have jumped this year. Well, yeah, I know that soccer. Soccer is the most watched sport in the world by a huge margin. It's not even close. Oh yeah, well, for sure. That's okay. I don't care about any of that. It's like, would I more people watch, watch the World Cup or Taylor Swift? World Cup, easy, <laughs> easy. Yeah, can't can't drink as much around <laughs> Taylor Swift. Why not? 
Just too much kids. You? <laughs> Did you say you can't drink as much? Yeah, you can't drink as much. It's she was literally right. caught on TV chugging a beer in Kansas City. Oh, a beer. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> Did, she, Did she have her pinky up? Also, those are like, no. I, I've we been don't put to those pinky stadiums. Kansas City. It's, like, it's like 30 bucks for a beer. That's criminal. No. Just, just pour half of it into your beard and save it for later. <laughs> Delicious. I don't know. I, I think, <laughs> as you said, though, big old nothing burger coming out of the Xbox. I'm, if anything, I, oh I wish God. I hadn't said anything. I wish they'd have let them just like, oh, I heard this, I heard that. And Phil just goes, no, I didn't. <laughs> I, on, just on his Twitter, just while he's in the bathroom, I didn't hear nothing. He, he just pops on Twitter and goes, you what, mate? <laughs> yeah, like, how, how did Reggie handle this kind of stuff with Nintendo? Granted, social media wasn't like, you know. That weird back then. N- Nintendo has assassins. Like, if you leak Nintendo information, like, you disappear. <laughs> there you go. If it was real, you'd be dead. There you go. <laughs> Who would you be more afraid of, Nintendo's assassins or Rockstar's? Oh, yeah, Rockstar got some hitters, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know. I feel like they did have to say something. Like, as dumb as all of the overblown discourse around them possibly going third party or whatever was, because it was dumb. Like, it was very dumb. It was like a lot, like like you could not escape it anywhere you went on the internet. So like they did have to say something just to calm a lot of that down. And luckily, like all of it was wrong in terms of the discourse. Because like if it turned out that the stuff that they were blowing up about was right, then like that would have been a big blow. And and not even saying that it was like if everything that was coming out was true, that's not even that bad. Like if Xbox was like, hey, we are gonna be a full third party thing. Uh, the, the consoles will like will taper down on on the R and D for those, but like we'll make sure that you know the software goes to everywhere and like that money is allocated to the devs, or whatever. Like that's not the worst idea in the world, but like it would have felt Boy. like it because the people who were you know gloom and dooming it would have felt vindicated. Well, you know, I brought up those Xbox influencers. They're like, I'm quitting the Xbox platform over all this, and then now they're like. <laughs> Crawling on back to like, hey, yeah. Never quit. <laughs> it's a drug. It's a drug. S- saying you quit is part of the, the drug. It really yeah. is part of the ritual. Yeah, I quit Twitter for a whole two minutes. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I wonder, I wonder if they felt the like, oh. I wonder like, like a toxic, like a person, like a boyfriend in a toxic relationship, like they legitimately felt like if they yelled about leaving, that that's what would change Xbox's mind about whatever decisions that they nah, had made, that they feel nah, like they're all, responsible. You just get used to yelling, cool honestly. You know, it's like, just it's all part of the it's all part of the influencer game of I'm leaving. It's a big thing. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Oh, I'm coming back now. It's a big thing again. And right, know, yeah, they like they're gone for like a they're, week. They're or keeping two. themselves in the news cycle, a part of it, and that's like that's the insidious part about a lot of that stuff is, you know, it's just these guys command a lot of intention. Because you know they supposedly know people at Xbox and they they have all the leaks and stuff like that and it's like, you know, Xbox like I think I think learned probably a big lesson on this is like don't don't cater to that and this is what happens when you have a social media pile. I don't think that they I don't think they did cater to that though. They they did. No, like Clobril, like I I don't know who that person is. I have no idea. Clobril, they do all like the Xbox graphics that look. Very official. I have no idea who the person is. I have no idea about their personality, but uh-huh. hundreds of thousands of people follow them for these graphics and for Xbox Insider info and all this kind of stuff. And like Xbox, Xbox, like Phil Spencer and Xbox and all that would retweet, you know, even the posters that they make and all that. They're basically doing free marketing for Xbox. Yeah. So, and so yeah. And that way you would engage because like there's a lot of people following that guy. Yeah. Yeah. But. Like they haven't like invited him on a stage or nothing, right? Like well, that, that was the point I made last week is like the fact that Xbox hasn't hired people like that or Tim Dog or whatever tells me <laughs> they don't want to work with them and they're just kind of putting up with, with them. That's, yeah, I mean, because yeah, because that's yeah. where their fans are, right? Like you can't yeah, you can't pretend they're not there when they're when they have that big of a, a chunk of your audience. Well, if I yeah, I wouldn't pretend they weren't there. I would hire them if they're if they're doing all that stuff for me. <laughs> But, but not if they suck, you wouldn't though. <laughs> well, it's you know, I don't like I said, I, I don't no judgment on Clover. I have no yeah, idea. I don't even know who that is. is. I have no idea who the person behind that is, but like some of these other Xbox influencers, it, it, you know, inside baseball stuff a little bit, but just in general, like this is just yet another one of those things where 
Like X, Xbox, Xbox just needs to put out good games, and all this goes away. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really, that's all really the good thing. game lover crunk. Yeah, we've been, yeah. we've been waiting for that for a while now, haven't we? <laughs> like yeah. that, that has been the answer to their mm. woes for so long, yeah. and like they still have not been able to do that consistently. Like every now and then they got one, but then that's it's just a, not enough in this land. Two or four and Ivan asked, why why would they hire them when they're doing it for free? Uh, if you hire them and like, this is the, this is the ugly business side of it. If you hire them, you control them. <laughs> and so when there is speculation and rumors, they can't drive their audiences crazy. Uh, you also can't, I mean, yeah, you could dangle the carrot forever. Like, you know, it's, well, yeah, it's, I know, but like they asked, they asked, they asked why not hire them? Or why would they hire them? And I'm saying, well, you would hire them to control that information that they put out. (laughs) Yeah. It is as much political as anything else because be an influencer for like, I don't know, 10 years and then, you know, you get to lobby after the fact. Yeah. Mm. So that's, yeah, like that's an end game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, like even for Microsoft, they know that you can't just buy like the, like the big content people in your community. Because once you are officially under that ban, then those people are like, well, I can't trust anything you say. You just work for them now, right? Exactly. Like, so, like, they're aware of that. Like, so, yeah, it, it makes more sense to, to like, work with them. But, like, yeah, you're not going to actually pay them to do anything. Like, they're already doing it. Don't need yeah. you on that ground floor. But, like I said before this went through, influencers, especially, like, the ones that, you know, I'm an Xbox influencer, I'm a PlayStation influencer, they want the, the console wars to keep on going. There is no need for them if there's console peace. So they're right. just going to keep on rolling up. They're warmongers. Constantly. Absolutely. It's Snowpiercer. I bet, like, the, the <laughs> Sony and the Nintendo and the Xbox influencers all get together in the same hot tub, smell their own farts. <laughs> they're all in on it. <laughs> I just, you know, like, it's probably, like, a conversation for another day. I just, like... I can't even I can't even like parse in my head having that much of a connection to a piece of hardware. The fact that like I would be a fan of it. I just I just can't like I can't get that through my head how like I would ever go on the Internet and defend Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo over something like I literally they are just games. That's that's what they are to me. I enjoy games. I enjoy playing games. I enjoy talking about games. That's as far as it goes. Like there is not once I have ever been angry about well okay that's false i have been angry when xbox <laughs> did not fix the red ring of death shit and i went through five ex- different xboxes i was angry but at you xbox then. kept buying them did you you gave them the wrong message <laughs> i will buy another one if it breaks that's i mean i've heard i've heard that story like they once three, once they yeah. got the news about it they they spent a lot of money to try and fix it not like, it fast took enough <laughs> not, not fast <laughs> enough for that got it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i get you i bought three of them in the 360 days. Yeah, I went I went through a couple yeah. 360s. <laughs> yeah, but like I just the I I just man, I'd, I'd be super interested. I don't know if there are studies or not. I just the the mental health study of people that have that much of an attachment to something like that. Cuz it's is, like sports, is, right? I, really? Like a little a is little, it? little little friendly rivalry, but then people get a little too much, and the fun is the hating. And I'm like, oh, yeah. you don't even, I don't even like football. I just like getting rowdy, you know? Yeah, it's that, the, yeah, it's the tribalism around yeah. it. Like it's it's in everything. It's not just games. Yeah, it's not, it's okay. not just sports. It's in media. It's in uh, like crafts. Yeah. It's probably yeah. like school, well, like, like okay. PTA meetings. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm just not a hardcore fan of everything. Anything because somebody brought up my Red Wings hat. And I'm like. Yeah, I like the Red Wings, but I would never get mad at somebody for trash talking the Red Wings. I don't give a shit. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're like... probably a, 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 a well adjusted adult. She also knows that they're a little doo doo. <laughs> There's nothing to get excited about right now. You might make the playoffs this year. You shut We're your rebuilding mouth. again. <laughs> you don't even have a hockey team. Well, neither do I. I'm in Kansas City. Uh, I so. love the Penguins. Uh, oh, God. Is that them? Why? Aren't they like. Uh, that's, like the one, right they like that's like one step above. The Bruins, the Bruins are awful. Yeah, Weren't they like broken are... for a while? I feel like in college, the Penguins were like unbeatable for some reason. I, I, I like my played, roommate talked about nothing but the goddamn Penguins. I played an Maybe. NHL game once, and their their stats were the best, so that's the best team. <laughs> <laughs> it changes year to year. Oh yeah, it was in two thousand five, so I, I'd imagine so. No. Oh, well. That's it. It's just what what can you do? A big old nothing burger. We're gonna make something out of it. It's it's almost like uh, what is it? Like just just in general, it's an unfortunate thing about the news cycle. But you got to keep it in mind that for them, it's better to say something stupid as it may be than to say nothing. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's it, 
you know, that's what they do. They make they make money from drawing up yeah. the drama and stuff like that. Yeah. Hell, it works. It works. I mean, I, I can't do it because, like, I look at those thumbnails that I, like, I shared, and I just feel stupid even looking at those. Like, the Dreamcast guy. The, the two Dreamcast Dreamcast guy thumbnails. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just use AI to generate yeah, my yeah, thumb yeah. face. Yeah, do, do it on a burner. <laughs> like, I genuinely just want to, like, I don't know. People call these social experiments, but I'm just a little gremlin, right? I was like, how, how big could I make a YouTube channel that just spreads console misinformation? <laughs> <laughs> It's not hard. It's just look, look at Tucker. Like, I, I gotta, I gotta admit, like that, that is a temptation, like in this field, to be like, all right, well, what's the easiest way to like grow an audience or like be in some aspect successful? But like, I don't know, curse my parents that I was like maybe raised with a little bit of integrity. <laughs> that like I don't like I don't know how long I could actually do that, like just being like really fake. The the. the if it's satirical all, enough though i'm okay with it that's oh, oh it's like a stephen, if it's stephen colbert video yeah, game you know what i've had that idea or, or like a, a like do a bora you know what i mean all you, you have to do to, to be Borat. successful in youtube media I, I i i put it in my uh my free patreon column you can go read about uh so you want to write about games uh if you make the white thumbnail with a your dumb face with red text you are in you are instant success story yeah but i'm a man of try color. it out guys what? But I'm a man of color. Even better. <laughs> that, no, no. no. Even yeah, better. you stand out more because the, the, all no, the rest of them dumb is, white, dumb white guys whole, like me. There's a whole side note thing, but the, there have been like some some high level Twitchers and whatnot that have tested out the difference yeah, I saw between that white thumbnails and not. And yeah, mm -hmm. so that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a bias. Yeah. Sh <laughs> Newsflash: You guys are racist. <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah. Oh, see, even and Paul brings it up too. I could do it in Spanish as well. I, I just hit a, a like a huge old audience by being bilingual. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is yeah, true. You got and you have the voice. You already have a leg up on everybody. You no, can. Make, I'm not. You can I make even the I dumbest. Use an, I would use click. those filters and and use those weird cadences. No, no, where no. It, like you, ends you can in make the, in the back end. Oh, wow, you can like make the, the dumbest clickbait sound great. That's your tagline. They don't want that. Have you heard, seen these clickbait videos? They, yes. they, half, of, half of them they're are on just my like, Twitter feed all the time now with Tucker Carlson. Yeah, they're in there. Half awful. of them are text to speech. Like, they, this is not even real people <laughs> yeah. talking to you. Yeah, like that that slow kid that read in class. So you're like, oh, no, not, not his <laughs> turn again. <laughs> that is the YouTube accent for these kinds of things. I don't know. Fall asleep to it or something. I'm going to do it. I'm going to just drop over the weekend. I'm just going to run a, uh, what is it? Yellow journalism account. Hey, dude, it's great. I, I I remember like a few years ago, like this YouTuber popped onto the scene, uh, and I kept seeing his thumbnails because YouTube just loves to put those in my algorithm for some reason. Even though I never watch them, I hide them every time I see them. A guy named like Downward Thrust, and I was like, that is a I... name. That is a hell of a YouTube name. And then it was just <laughs> all the same. This failed in red, big red text, and this sucks, and this is woke in big red text. I'm like, Jesus. Christ, there's, there's literally there's literally uh, a template for this stuff. You can Google it. Yeah, I'm gonna try. It. Yeah, let's see that. That's gonna be a I'll cook up a nine month a nine month cold take baby. Where it's like, all right, I just spread I'll, misinformation. Here's how big it went. I'll, I'll do I, the I that. I'll do the red laser eyes emoji for me on my un unpacked about all this Xbox stuff with the white red thumbnail and the red text. Love it. I love it. And then, and then, a, and then a sorely red text pointing to mm -hmm. uh, the Xbox console <laughs> saying it's dead. Eric is so fast. Yo, arrows. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> like what on <laughs> earth? Oh, that is criminal, man. <laughs> Got the red arrow and everything too. Lume. And the circle. Oh, oh no. my god. Uh, Lou Lu May says Nick clearly a distaste for the stuff is white and hit your targets. You're absolutely fucking right, it is, and that's why I'm glad I got fired. <laughs> it was I it was absolutely. So I mean, well, there were a couple of other things that came out of that uh, uh, podcast that we didn't like dive into super heavy. Uh, at the very least, the fact that they said that they were still gonna focus on uh, hardware going forward, and that. The next one that's planned is supposed to be this gigantic technological leap. Uh, what do you guys make of that as a, is that just like a kind of throwaway assurance or did they kind of reveal something in terms of like their, well, their the, philosophy? The Series X refresh like already leaked. 
we, we saw that right yeah we saw that ago. Big. so we heard yeah yeah well that's the dumb that's how stupid is all this when their console plans literally leak through the ftc and everybody's like they're leaving the console business yeah that was it was dumb it was, it was dumb. there their plans were already there <laughs> yeah scared of that kentucky fried console is still on the way <laughs> that thing that thing should have taken over the world what are we doing a fucking console <laughs> like you would never have to leave all you gotta do next is add a toilet to one of these things you get sick of smelling chicken all day though surely no, no oh, they, they, food, bro. you take that smell home with you and you're like oh god yeah I, 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 I feel like if you bought a console that makes chicken for you you're probably not getting tired of the chicken smell oh yeah if you bought it yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. More, more, they're more than happy you you are you are set in stone what you are yeah, doing with your sure. life <laughs> you are not leaving your basement <laughs> you are eating chicken and you were <laughs> shitting in the box next to you to keep playing that game for. That, hours. That's what I'm saying there. Like you, this, you this say, is a nightmare scenario that you're describing. <laughs> you said the technological leaps, where I'm like, does it cook chicken? Because what what do we have left to do now? <laughs> that we're even losing features. It's not going to have a disc tray. So, like, what what are we doing? Yeah, the, the, yeah. The odds of it having a disc tray are probably low. Like, but like, yeah. What tray, what what, no what could they possibly add to make this a leap? Like more teraflops? <laughs> I'm not even using the ones I got. Yeah, you get a pair of chops now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, turn into a drone or something. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so they, they the Series X refresh sounds like it's going to be announced this holiday. And then they're, I, I think Tom Warren was the one that said it, maybe Steven Totillo, but like the date for this big next Xbox console is like 2028. Oh, that like that's not like a refresh, right? That's a, a just that's, a new that's, box. That's their next their next right. gen okay. console. So that's when the next Halo drop. All right. Hmm. <laughs> uh, no, see? the two Mandalorian says Terra crops. No, it's a Terra chops. Terra crops. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's it is what it is. I, it's a far away console. I don't care about right now. <laughs> I mean, if they keep going multi- cross platform, I'm not getting it. You know, no, I I mean, if, hardware. If you're, yeah, I mean, I honestly, yeah. honestly, I probably, I, <clears throat> well, I say I won't get it, but then I have an Xbox X and Series S because I'm a bum. But I, uh, yeah, I also bought a Series S. I, it is for my son, but I bought both of them. <laughs> See, I and I've even been considering an S. I was like Steam Deck or S. I don't, I don't know what I want now. I'm a I'm an asshole. I, I I have a Series S for my bedroom and an Xbox Series X for my basement. This is this is why I was hoping that they would get around to releasing that dongle thing because I, I just stick that in my bedroom TV and have an Xbox upstairs. Yeah, but yeah. You don't, you no don't, news. Well, all right, well, all right. I'm not that much of an asshole because I got the Series X as a review unit and then the Series S I bought. <laughs> so. Most... How much would <laughs> having two consoles is just... <laughs> if I was really an asshole, I would I would drill a hole through my floor into my bedroom so I connect my PC to my TV in my room. But I mean it's your house to do it. Nobody's gonna stop you. <laughs> yeah. Although Mesa's hang on, what was Tucker Carlson mentioned earlier anyways? Because they were talking <laughs> oh. about AI generated clickbait bullshit, and that's all he does. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Compton just says, did Nick just backhandedly call Casey an asshole? <laughs> 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 no, I said uh, I was an asshole because I'm so lazy that I just bought an Xbox for my bedroom <laughs> instead of just disconnecting. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't buy it for myself. The Series S was for my child. <laughs> so yeah, I am lazy enough. I, the, the thought, so I'm like Steam Deck, gaming laptop, or Xbox S. I don't know which one. Steam, all right, Steam Deck. Well, yeah, Steam Deck's the best option because you can just get the Steam Deck, and then they have the like the docking ports. Get a docking port for each of your TVs, and you're good to go. So How you, much is that all together? The Steam Deck and like it, that because that docking port's not like cheap, right? Yeah, it's like thirty five bucks. Oh, oh yeah, that breaks it after I've dropped like seven hundred for the Steam no, Deck. No, thirty five like, is just too much. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, since we talked all this talk about Xbox, uh, let's talk a little bit about Sony. Uh, mm-hmm. Because the big news story that's going around about Sony right now is that none, they are not releasing any major first party franchise, important word there, in case you mm-hmm. know, titles until at least April 2025. So, why are you calling me out? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because <laughs> it's a good thing I fact checked you. <laughs> mm. uh, but that, that makes, mainly means, you know, no God of War, no. Horizon. Horizon. Damn, no Sly Cooper. Uh, no. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Go if, 
yeah, I'm assuming Ghost of Tsushima counts as a major franchise. Um, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be releasing first party titles. That means like whatever's coming is new IP, which I'm more excited about than more franchise stuff. So gimme, gimme, gimme. That, that's news to my, that's music to my ears. We're getting I mean, stuff. that, that specification that they're not releasing franchise titles until at least April, 2025, it suggests that it could be new IP. Doesn't confirm it. Like we could very well get nothing. <laughs> Yeah, we could. Yeah, we and, could. And love it too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, the, um, the deals they're making are not bad going off of the stuff that's coming soon. Like the, what is it? Path of the Ronin. What's the name of that game? Rise of the Ronin. Rise of the Ronin. Yeah, that Ronin. one, the Stellar Blade doesn't look half bad. Uh, they, they got also whatever Screen, Screen Enix does is just beholden to Sony for whatever reason. Like they're not going to be hurting for like exclusives. Mm. Like they are the, the darling of third parties. So, yeah, I think they'll be fine, even yeah, if they the don't release anything. Count? Uh, yeah, like people. Yeah, I feel like remasters count. Okay. Yeah. Well, the the rumor today was that there's a new Astrobot game coming out. Uh, that that platforming, the game that came free with the PS5 actually did pretty well. Obviously, because mm-hmm. it was free. Um, but that means a lot of people put their hands on it and played it, and might actually buy or play a new one if it comes to PlayStation Plus or whatever they're doing with it. Uh. Sony Bend is the one studio I can think of that might be ready to announce whatever they're working on, and it's clearly not going to be a Days Gone sequel. So, not sure or what's going on. Or a Siphon Filter remake, re- <laughs> reboot? No, I don't, don't think so either. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Sony, Sony Bend, I wouldn't be surprised to hear them announce their project this year. Uh, and then they've got, yeah, they've got Fair Games with the dollar sign at the end of it. Uh, they've got... Uh, uh, what was another one? God. I put it in my video. Another oh, life service God. thing. Yeah, not I, marathon. Not marathon. Uh, Concord. Concord. Yeah, Concord. There you go. Uh, well, so whatever those two games are, those are probably in the lineup for this year at some point. Uh, <clears throat> what are the odds that Sony Ben's game is also a live service game? Hmm. There's a thought. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think most of their live service stuff is coming from these third party partnerships. And I don't think, mm. as far as I recall, the job descriptions for Sony Ben's new thing is not multiplayer related. Okay. So, it's encouraging. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And then we also don't know what um, uh, the studio in LA uh, behind the MLB The Show games, I think, was working on a new IP. We don't know what that is yet. Oh, wow. Or, they're, or, they're, or they were helping with the studio on a new IP. So yeah, I don't know, but I don't yeah, I don't expect this year to be like aside from their third party partnerships, I wouldn't expect this year to be like a, you know, blowout year for PlayStation or anything, considering we just had God of War, Horizon, Returnal, like most of their first party <laughs> stuff seems to align within like one of two one or two two years of each other lately. Mm-hmm. And then they take like a big gap year and then come back swinging cuz like yeah, whatever whatever Naughty Dog's working on, don't ex- I you know, clearly not expecting that till 2025. Like I but would argue uh, with the exception of Spider-Man 2, that the last couple of Sony's uh, big first-party exclusives did very, very well, but didn't necessarily set the world on fire. Like, they weren't, like, in comparison to kind of the the stuff that they had been releasing prior to, like, this past year, this stuff was kind of just like, all right, well, that's fine. Like, it wasn't, like, it's just that everyone else, well, not everyone else, Microsoft in particular, was not really worth mentioning in that conversation. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I think we've talked about this before. I was I was a much bigger fan of God of War 2018 than I was Ragnarok. Right. I Same really thing liked, with Horizon. I feel yeah, like I really like the felt. first game more than the second game. Yeah, Ghost uh, Ghost of Tsushima is the one that like won me I, won all, all my awards. But <laughs> yeah, I feel like Ghost of Tsushima is just very over overhyped. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah gameplay what gameplay wise sure I yeah, it's nothing nothing special to write home about but I, I it's just right up my alley as a historical epic kind of guy sure I love so. the setting great story but as a game it was very mid yeah it was very Assassin's Creed <laughs> yeah wasn't that just Valhalla but Japan uh, to to be quite frank, like Helldivers yeah. two, Helldivers two is the most excited I've been about. Well, Returnal and Helldivers two have been the two PlayStation exclusives that excited me the most uh, in a long time. And like, I really, li- I really like PlayStation exclusives. Like, I love, I really like Spider Man. Uh, mm-hmm. 
I really, I really don't remember much about Horizon Forbidden West story, but I know I had a good time playing it. <laughs> but in general, like, yeah, I think Returnal and Helldivers two are like the two games that are like, yeah, this is this is good shit. Come on, I need, I need to play Helldivers. What Returnal? Yeah. Well, I also need to play Returnal. 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 <laughs> Oh. Okay. Looks like we're back online. Cool. Well, okay. Yeah, I think it's back. Believe we're back, chat. Yep, yep. There they go. Oh, hi. Hello, everybody. We're welcome. Welcome back to episode 10 of <laughs> Fire Link. <laughs> episode There's 10, part two. Some... Yep. Still yeah, on the this... same stream page, though, this time. Didn't break it this time. Yep. Uh, uh, the title is This Xbox Podcast Could Have Been an Email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn! Why didn't you say that before the podcast? I didn't see what did you put. Big nothing burger. I don't know what yeah. that is, Doug. I had a burger before we got here. This <laughs> Xbox <laughs> podcast could have been an email fix. There, new did, title. Did you literally just change the title? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That <laughs> is the speed of second wind. We adapt. <laughs> That's journalism on the fly, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Tragic, absolutely tragic. <laughs> uh, getting back on track, uh, Nicole Wynn donates two dollars. Says Hell Divers is a hell of a drug. Hell, I have put so many. I guess we're gonna just, you know what? Before we do that, Eric, let's just run that ad before we get into what we've been playing. Because <laughs> I've been yeah. playing a lot of Hell Divers too, and I have a lot to say about it. So enjoy this ad of Bell Rogue, as we'll be right back. Be right back. Sponsored by Spell Rogue, your next deck building roguelike obsession from Guidelight Games and Ghost Ship Publishing. Available now in early access. Cast powerful spells with the mythical mana dice as you manipulate rolls to duplicate, split, flip, and enchant your cards with spell effects to bend fate to your will. Because Spell Rogue has deck building and dice rolling, and that's double the nerd things. Experiment with dozens of legendary artifacts and hundreds of upgradable spells to build some truly wild combinations. And those will come in handy as you attempt to cleanse the land and annihilate the monstrous Void Walkers. Because let's be honest, voids are very dangerous and nobody should be walking anywhere near them. Head on over to Spell Rogue's Steam page to learn more about the game and join in on the early access adventure today. Because those mana dice ain't gonna roll themselves. <laughs> That looks like fun. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us through that ad for Spell Rogue. If you like Slay the Spire, uh, Jack had a really good time with that on stream the other day. So uh, as we said before, with the ads that we do, we're actually sponsoring things that like we think are cool and we think you might think are cool. So maybe check it out. Uh, but yeah, uh, going back to the Super Chats, uh, Nicole Wynn. Uh, did I get the name right? Yes, Nicole Wynn. The $2 says Hell Divers is a hell of drugs. Yeah, so I've been playing... A lot of Hell Divers too uh, this past week. It is a damn good time for us. You played it on stream with us today for shoot the shit, and I believe you also had a good time, even though oh, yeah. you kept trying to murder me. That's the fu <laughs> that's the fun I had. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very like uh, it could be as serious as you want it to be. It could be as goofy as you want it to be. Very like deep rock galactic, even more chaotic kind of vibe. It's great. Mm. So what what is the loop of hell divers 2 is it like the same as the first one or like just you, new perspective or like how, how have they improved it on it well it's a third person shooter now uh, mm -hmm. and you basically go in and you shoot a lot of bugs while completing different objectives like launching a nuke or helping people get to safety or surviving for a few minutes or just yeah doing all random sorts of things uh is it like it, one big map or are they like are you like going from like location to location? You, they're on they're on worlds and like the maps are, you know the 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 worlds change so the scenery changes but the maps are relatively like the same, uh, so it's not yeah it's not like an open world or anything like that. Okay, the miss, their missions are take place in an open space, but it's not yeah it's not an open world game or anything. It's very mission based, uh, mm -hmm. and so some some of those missions can last up to forty five minutes just. Because basically you'll drop in and you have like a main objective to do and then a couple side objectives. And the whole point is to try and do kind of as many objectives as you can because you earn the currencies to unlock things. Uh, so okay. like you have requisition points, which when you go back to your starship, you can use to get uh, these things called stratagems. And when you're playing 
use stratagems to call on things like airstrikes and orbital strikes and uh, support weapons or like turrets or and all this other stuff that you can unlock uh, to bring into the game world and basically help turn the tide against you uh, for you or against, against you, you if you're I mean, frost yeah. well if you're frost and you put minefields <laughs> directly where you're defending uh, no, they never would have expected it <laughs> yeah, like i said on stream they uh they can't kill us if we kill us so mm -hmm. uh it's one way to look at it but yeah no it, it's just it scratches i i really like like deep rock galactic i really like left for dead and all that this mm -hmm. game just scratches a much better itch i guess in those games for me because of like there's a lot of physical comedy humor in it uh and also the gameplay just feels so goddamn good like yeah. you shoot the limbs off the bugs like everything reacts to getting hit it, it just feels great to play feels nice and strategic too because like you got two things there and that like <clears throat> the functionality on the mini map is like i don't know i don't think i've seen a game like that where you're just like holding the button on it and you start messing around with it but then uh, those stratagems that he's talking about, it feels like in I, those Iron Man scenes where he just kind of whips out his, his, his wrist and it's like, doo, 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 doo. because you, that's the only way that you call in an airstrike is like you hold control and then you have to press the up, down, left, right, whatever. It's oh, asking cool. you for a very specific launch, right? Like a, little, like a code sequence. I'm putting, yeah, I'm putting in the codes. Doo, 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 fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah. it's a little hectic, but it also has that tactility that I enjoy. Oh well, you, well, you you haven't seen the most hectic it gets yet because we only play up to challenging. Like hard, once you go to hard mode, that's where like the game really becomes the game because it is insane. It's uh -huh. absolutely insane. Like there there is nonstop just madness going on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you like stuff like Deep Rock Galactic or Left 4 Dead or anything like, you will adore this game. It's just You're a bit of trolling so too. Goddamn good, <clears throat> man! Like the it's a live service game, but there's no. Like you can earn premium currency just by exploring the world and finding it to unlock the premium stuff in the game. Uh, oh wow! So, yeah, like it's not, it's not begging you for money. It's like the store is not the first thing you see when you load up the game. It's great. It's great. So, so what, it's exactly, what it's is, exactly what you want from like a live service game? So what is in the store then? Like just you know costumes and stuff. Like yeah, cosmetic? like okay. yeah, like just yeah, just cosmetics that you can buy really and. You know what? Like I said at the start of the stream, any game that gives lets you have a cape on your character is automatically a game of the year for me. So it's uh, yeah, it's game, got a game's cape. got good capes. You, 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 dope ass capes. What was that game we played with the dinosaurs that like came pouring through Exo Primal? Exo Primal, yeah. yeah. It's got a lot of that like extra dramaticness to it because like when you die, you need to respawn. They have to put in the code, right? And then mm -hmm. you come through like this pod and whatever, but you can kind of steer it as you're coming down so you can smash through something. Sometimes you just hit each other because you're dicks and it's great. Other times though, it's like we're we're getting run down by a thing and it's just at that last second you hit it and the music goes crazy. Dun, 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 and I'm like, I'm here, bitches. It's great. <laughs> it is, that it sounds like just, a lot of fun, honestly. Great. Yeah, uh, and like you, when you land back in the world, you're like falling in like an ODST trooper, and uh, mm -hmm. I mean it, it wastes a spawn, but like one of the most satisfying things you can do in the game is just land on your friend when they're running away from something. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it's it's great. It, it's just it's so much fun. It's it's the most fun I've had with like an online co-op game in a long time, and it's it's like super. You're like refreshing after somehow getting stuck on uh Suicide Squad over the weekend playing a game that like the loop is simple, but it's hella fun to play. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't feel dumb for playing it. It's definitely one of those like you yeah, have a few rounds with with your friends, be it you know, drinks or of the game. But it's also got a lot of just tiny things that are nice, like the the diving. But it's funny running through the brush, right? And you're so used to just like gunning it but he, my man will just his cape will start getting stuck on things it's like oh dear god i shouldn't have came this way it's it's yeah. goofy it's, it's silly. Wait, like the, your cape getting stuck on your foliage character will actually gets, slow you down you you will just get stuck going through foliage if you don't do it right yeah that's i am very intrigued by that yeah it's got that's, a lot that sounds like a, a dumb thing to to focus on but that's kind of really cool i don't know if eric can pull up the clip on the stream but also uh for somebody like me uh, which is ironic as fuck because I'm working on a video about positive multiplayer experiences that is a, a toxic multiplayer sometimes. Pushing J-Mate you know, off the cliff today into a pile of bugs was <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, hopefully hopefully Eric can find it while he's scrubbing through that thing. It's like very, very end of the stream, Eric. Very end, yeah. <laughs> 
but what? It's, like in the middle of all that going on, you're just like, I think we just chain killed each other, landing on each other's heads for a <laughs> yeah. five in a row. Right. Jay, Jay thought he was flying, but he was pushed. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jay. But yeah, no, it's good stuff. Uh, all right, let's get back to a couple more super chats. Uh, Joe McRory, two dollars, says, "Weren't we getting a live service Assassin's Creed?" Uh, no, that's Assassin's Creed. I think you're thinking of Assassin's Creed Infinity, yeah, which is basically just their platform for hosting their Assassin's Creed games. So, like, kind of like Call of Duty these days, you can basically load up Call of Duty, you know, uh, Modern Warfare 2018, 2019 through like Call of Duty Vanguard in it. <laughs> it's Didn't all they give it's up all on that though. I don't. I don't know if they did or not. I haven't so, cared to look. <laughs> uh, there were Dodger Square for remember for three months in the Green Games. Is Casey totally enjoyed Stray Indie Game of the Year? Mm, yeah. Don't get me started. Dodger. Dow- Dow- <laughs> <laughs> Stray is fine. Stray is a fine, okay game. But the way y'all be talking it up is criminal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthew C. Snow. Five dollars says wishful thinking. I hope Hi-Fi Rush encourages Xbox to give more chances to unique games and studios because Xbox can't really rely on legacy games now. I think that's, I think they've already been doing that. I mean, you got Pentiment, got Hi-Fi Rush, Power World. Yeah. I mean, that's not them though. <laughs> uh, Microsoft. Yeah, they gave it a Game Pass deal. I'm sure that helped. There you go. I mean, I feel like Nintendo also is doing that. There's a lot of bigger ones trying to acquire some smaller. Mm-hmm. I feel like Phil Spencer specifically said uh, after the acquisition that if any of the Activision studios like had like a good idea for like any legacy thing Mm -hmm. that he'd be willing to like give them a shot. So like if if folks are out there in their studios and have pitches and I'm sure they do like because those guys have been starved for like doing something creative outside of like the next Call of Duty. Like I I do think over like in the next couple of years, we'll start seeing some legacy stuff come back and like they might look like brand new stuff anyway so i i feel like there's there's a reason to be excited we just need to see if it comes to fruition like we've been waiting for the last five years or so indiana jones looks really good true i like it yeah i'm I'm quite excited for uh hellblade too no i don't i still don't really know what it is yeah <laughs> Like at, at this point, like just give me the game so I can make a judgment <laughs> for myself. Like I, I cannot go off of what they've shown. Uh, Cameron French, five Canadian dollars, has bought a three sixty because my best friend had one and have stayed with it. PlayStation exclusives aren't worth the paycheck I need for food. But yeah, food, food does come first. You can't play games if you're dead. Wait, you're still on a three sixty in twenty twenty four. That's what? what year is it? That's loyalty. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's not the worst thing. If you know, if you're gonna Didn't pick a red, console, it, that'll last you a while. No, they don't. They just red ring of death over and over again. Oh, yeah, yeah. They fi- they fix it eventually. You had to get one of the newer ones though. Yeah, the the elite, yeah, the elite was I, sexy I, though. I, I did yeah, get the, the elite. elite was the elite with the remember remember how dumb Xbox used to be? And I know somebody brought it up in chat was like Xbox consumer friendly what are you talking about because like yeah uh you had to you used to have to give that big giant clip in hard drive for it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 the yeah. big wi-fi adapter yeah yeah like every everything you needed to like basically play the xbox you had to pay it was like look we're gonna get this form factor no matter what <laughs> yeah. just stripped all such all sorts of functionality out of it was that was that and that and that was the day they decided xbox wasn't going to be profitable it was when they changed <laughs> Away from selling you everything piecemeal. All the peripherals, like the old Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> like they heard you complaining. They was like, "All right, we fixed it. It's just a box with everything in it." Doom <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Rider donates five dollars. Says still, still in the past, catching up. But Frost, great cut, looks good. All right, thank you. I let my barber know. And uh, <laughs> the the true Mandalorian says, "My name is Nick, and the Red Wings are the best team ever. The Avalanche suck." You're right. Thank you uh, for those two dollars. Yeah, I guess that, that was Nick. Is that <laughs> yeah. is that your rival or something? Uh, Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, they they can eat shit. Avalanche <laughs> named themselves after a force of nature. I, I, yeah, you, you haven't been on this. Well, this is like what the first time you've guessed on a fire link. I think I made Eric pull up like Red Wings versus Avalanche hockey fight at one point. Oh. He, you did do that. <laughs> it was great. Who won? Well, no, it wasn't a fight. You you uh, made him show us some man. Oh no, man. Uh, Mar, uh, Mar, Mar, yeah, Brad Marchand licking people in the face. That's how he 
and talk Ooh. shit to people. What? Yeah. Yeah, somebody should have ripped his tongue out. How old is he? What the hell? He's too old to be doing too that. Old. He's like a yeah. sticking his tongue out while everybody's dancing on blades. That is, that is a game he's playing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Eric, if you pull up 1995 Avalanche versus Red Wings fight, you'll get to see uh, Chris Osgood beat the shit out of uh, Patrick Waugh, and it's great. This is a family show, Nick. We can't show that sort of violence. <laughs> it's better than it's a real fighting, not real fighting. <laughs> 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 uh, Nick the OG $2 as obligatory Tunic was robbed I got you KC Nick the OG the, yeah. the, the only the only Nick we really need around these parts <laughs> what Stray was like what more you say the fourth his fourth favorite yeah it was his fourth like, favorite in all the category all the games <laughs> and Beast Marsh $2 says KC is still D's nuts Stray was awesome yeah, well, what that know. doesn't even make any sense <laughs> he put D's in parentheses so you I can't him. even see that, Chad. I think you made that one up. <laughs> what? <laughs> like I don't, I don't see that on the list. No, I see it. Yeah, Casey is still D's nuts. Straight was awesome <laughs> without any. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm already thinking about that all night now. Thanks. You picked up a pair of straight D's nuts on the road. Well, <sighs> like you guys are not making any more sense <laughs> than when this started. He paid money for it. You just you don't take that. Worry about it. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Getting back to what we've been playing. Or, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. I forgot. Casey put the one subject he wanted to talk about in here. <laughs> oh. <There's> a... <laughs> All right. Nick, Nick is not excited about this next I was subject, expecting I you to put here. like Embracer on here. Like that was making the rounds this morning. Yeah. Let's what about Embracer? I didn't, I didn't hear about Embracer. Oh, here. Oh, they I have just a said the quiet. You. Yeah, they said the quiet part out loud. I it? have a very lovely quote for you. Oh. As soon as I find it. Our overruling principle is always is to always maximize shareholder value in any given situation. When it came to talking about laying off fourteen hundred employees and canceling forty two games, uh, they are opening up um, for shareholders to come and bring put money into this, so I can make right it after yeah. I <laughs> yeah. fired everyone. Yeah. We'll fire enough people to make sure you get your money. Wow, lovely. Which is, which is which is why that works genuinely people are like yeah, how does. could how could who what investor or shareholder would ever give money to these people well they we make would them, know. They, they always make their money back it's a win win yeah, like, embracer prioritize you making yeah. your money back but how do you make money with no product embracer well that i'd like for that reason i don't care cuz in the end it's like i'll own embracer that, that's just the offer here it's like you're either going to do <laughs> yeah. well and make me money or you're going to go in debt and you're going to sell yourself for parts to me Yes. You ever wanted a game studio? We should we should invest. Can't can't Uh, be this guy. You know, Embracer, Embracer like bought up pretty much a good chunk of the double A industry (laughs) that was just starting to make a comeback (laughs) and laid off all those people in the studios. And uh, the 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 forty two games, like I don't I don't really like people are gonna look at that number and go, oh man, like that's a lot of stuff. I don't really know what is in there because they have a huge mobile division. So like 42 games sounds like a lot, but it's probably not like 42 big AAA projects or AA projects like you're thinking of. It's a lot, probably a lot of these smaller cash in games that just weren't going to live on the app store and really do anything for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they had like Embracer is huge. They had like, I think they said last time they had like 170 something stuff projects in development. Uh, So a lot of Borderlands games, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, no, Embracer uh, saying that, you know, if I was an employee there uh, and, and just having been laid off from a company that probably thought the same way, I'd be, uh, I'd be looking around. I'd be looking around to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, either. And they're going to go the same way. Like, if they don't put out any major heads, they're going to go the same way as THQ. Like, they. Don't they own them? Well, THQ, well, the, THQ the first went THQ. bankrupt, and then they came back as THQ Nordic, and then they got bought by Embracer, and then Embracer owns them, THQ Nordic, or sorry, Embracer owns THQ Nordic, Deep Silver, a couple other like they, they, publishers. They went on a double-A shopping spree, and they never had kind of a, an end goal. That's not the right fight, Eric. That's the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
the Close trade enough. Red Wings versus That's Colorado. That's the perfect fight. Eh? That footage is HD. This is from yeah. 1995. We didn't have HD. Nick, we have a then. we have a quality standard to uphold here. We can't be putting up 480p video in that little box. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the last time the Wings won a game, a championship. It was oh okay. Well, we don't talk about that. <laughs> Why are you gonna do that? That just hurt me. <laughs> I'll buy I'll buy a hat. I'll be a fan with you. And hurt together. <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> yeah, there's a freaking Red Wings apparel shop near here for some reason. I might as well. Are you sure? Are you sure it's for the hockey team? It is your bloody icon. Yes, unless yeah, they, they were selling like... wings and they just pirated the logo. Yeah, I was gonna there... say they probably just pirated the logo. Okay. No, there is no a, sense. definitely a Red Wings like chicken, uh, <laughs> like franchise. Yes, that is. I've seen, <laughs> and like it is like it's just a Red Wing <laughs> is their logo. So. Dude. It looks it looks very close to Nick's hat, but it's not exactly the same. Hmm. Yeah, unless there's a wheel in the middle, it's fake shit. <laughs> what's the oh, wheel for? What that is? What? What's the wheel for? What? Yeah, what's City? the wheel for? Oh, <laughs> oh, there's a wheel. Detroit. Okay, I get it. Oh. I'm a ninja. I know what you're asking me when you say explain the meaning of Red Wings, and I'm not doing that. <laughs> 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 this is a rated PG. 17 podcast yeah, ch children <laughs> watch this podcast they shouldn't but they, uh, oh but yes they 1998 eric 1998 is correct yes <laughs> this, is, this is a very uh, strange podcast that we do speak, speak, <laughs> speak, someone speak. would just walk in and see this hockey fight going on in the corner and the three of us talking about <laughs> <laughs> like uh, wing stop or whatever. Sp speaking of uh, things for kids, there's an Avatar West Airbender game fighting game coming. There you go. <laughs> All right. Avatar. <laughs> yes, it is a show for kids, but it has very mature subject matter and is handled in a very adult way. One of the greatest, I would honestly rank the Avatar cartoon series as one of the best animated series ever created, point blank, period. Yeah, but what about Netflix and not letting a character be sexist? Well, that's the live action thing. Yeah. That's stupid <laughs> what they're doing. Like every, I don't know, why, I don't know why they would go out on a press junket and and kind of explain to everybody all of the the narrative changes that they're deciding to make. Like, did they did they think that would go over well? They're they're that disconnected from what an audience wants. Yes, Casey. Uh, well, <laughs> so, well, that's upsetting, but. I will say Avatar has not had a good track record in terms of like video game media, but the idea of a Avatar fighting game makes a lot of sense. It's something that I actually um, had thought would be a good idea like long before I'd heard this news. Um, and the folks behind uh, Them's Fighting Herds is under the umbrella of the the kind of developer collective who has announced this. Uh, was it Maximum Games? Uh, I think it was Mode Six. Specifically, who did Them's Fighting Hers, which is a, a it's kind of a, a goofy looking game. Like it's kind of a, a an off brand My Little Pony type world, but it's a awesome two D fighting game. Like it has tons of mechanics, really cool uh, like single player campaign that teaches you uh, its mechanics as you go through like a, a story, or whatever. Like it was brilliant. If they have anything to do with making something like that with the actual Avatar franchise, I think that could be like kind of like a big ass deal because like the the avatar universe has such a good collection of characters and that is something that lends itself very well to a fighting game like just especially characters who are based in like elemental powers and abilities and skills like they they are up the wazoo with just really cool shit that you can build like a move set around so like i i was very excited to hear this kind of news but i'm sure we won't see anything from this for like a really long time is there, is there a big enough cast of characters to have like a yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, especially especially across both uh, seasons. Like, there's you know the I first guess, like, season, and, and, too. right? Yeah, like there's a lot of characters in Korra. There's a lot of characters in just mainline uh, Avatar as well that could actually uh, fill out a roster because they're not even all benders. Some of those characters like do uh, chi blocking, like mm -hmm. yeah, or they're just like Sokka, who just out here right? With yeah, swords. Sokka, who's like just a genius who throws a boomerang and is a sword fighter and stuff. Like, mm. there's a lot of stuff they could do. Get the boulder in there. You guys you guys know what I'm talking about. Boulder. <laughs> there he comes. Did you, did you try that Avatar mobile game that came out not long ago? Mobile game? No. Uh, I don't, what was that? Mobile game 2024. I forget what it's called. I didn't even know they had games. Oh, oh maybe, my God. There's so many. Maybe it's not out yet. Uh, 
Avatar, mm-hmm. The Last Airbender, Quest for Balance. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I believe that's it. Oh. Uh, yeah, the Avatar, Less Been Air multiplayer game announced. Uh, yeah, me too, John. Blee. I thought Avatar, like James Cameron's Avatar at first. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be one of the worst fighting game rosters because you would not be able to tell any of those characters apart. Oh, no. Wait, I Absolutely. guess there's, there's an Avatar... Oh no, that's fake. That's, I don't know what that is. That's fake. Save <laughs> yeah. it for my for my new channel I'm making. Wait, is this is this the, the Avatar Generations? Is that what it was? I don't know. I don't know. Avatar Generations. Yeah, I've not heard of yes, it. Yes, it was Avatar Generations. Movie. Just kidding. It got shut down already. See, <laughs> all I all I'm thinking is if if Avatar can reskin Spellbreak. And then make it into that, uh, what is it, with the core of the little bending arena uh, that they have? Yeah, the, the pro bending. Want. Yes. Yeah. That, like, that, as, even as a mini game, that would be so fun. That would be the new eSport. Like, like it, yo, it really, <laughs> be huge. there are, there are, like, this writes itself. Someone just needs to put someone who cares about the series on this project. Me. <laughs> they have the, you mean the TV series? Yeah, and, and someone who has watched and loved that TV series. They had the original creators on it. They left over creative differences. I wonder why. Yeah, because they probably didn't let them do what they wanted to do. But in regards to in regards to making a game like th- like yeah. that, like that universe is just fertile ground for mechanics, like specifically for video game. Like not many like TV things lend themselves so well to like something that you interact with because you know they're very mm-hmm. story heavy. But Avatar kind of has both. Like its world and characters are built for like stats and and skills because like it's all like, you know, martial arts and ability based, like like physical abilities and magical abilities. Like this stuff translates so easily, I feel like. Uh, you're gonna get your gacha game and you're gonna like it. <laughs> 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 Uh, maybe. I don't know. They've they've not made a good Avatar game yet. If this if this one has quality, like I I will dive right in. But like if <laughs> if if they once again just try to milk the IP because it is popular, they just try to milk it for like a quick buck. Like I, I'm not taking that bait. Well, that's what do you think they're doing right now with the Netflix show, the games, <laughs> the plushies, trying to, trying to yeah. bring back they <laughs> trying to bring back an IP that maybe had its day, the TV show. <laughs> I wonder how long they try like make new IP, make new IP. Fuck it, use an old one. They they opened up a, a new studio to make more animated like movies, but like the those movies haven't come out yet. Like we've not seen trailers or nothing. They did announce that there'd be three of them, and what the subject matter would be. Uh, but yeah, that's probably where the, the creators think, uh, are focusing their energy. Cena says, "I think the Legend of Korra game was a good game. Uh, pretty sure Platinum made that, yeah." Yeah, um, it, most people did not think it was a good game though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is what it is. What the hell? Uh, moving on now uh, to what we've been playing this week. So I already talked about Helldivers 2. Uh, the other game, Casey, you've been playing a lot of, and I think you have a bite size coming up soon for it. But uh, I would not say soon, but <laughs> soon, but, but coming. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, TM two DB, TBD uh, on Banishers, uh, yeah, which is the new game from Delta, which is an action adventure game. Uh, Banishers mm-hmm. goes to New Eden. It's kind of a uh, like a. Kind of a dark love story uh, with, with with a lot of ghosts that you you banish. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm uh, very you, impressed with this. Have you finished it? Uh, I have not finished it yet. Uh, I've not been able to like sit down and put like huge chunks every time I I, I sit down with it. But mm-hmm. I've been loving every moment of of what I've been playing. Uh, I'll admit that I have been getting a little lost, and it's funny because there's a lot of yellow paint in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Dreamer says, okay, Don't Nod is who? Don't Nod made the Life is Strange games. They made mm-hmm. Vampire, Vampire, Vampire. I just call it Vampire. That's what they Yeah, it's that. Vampire. So, yeah. Well, some people, yeah, it's probably I think, Vampire. I think, I think Marty tries to call it Vampire. And if he doesn't, then I'm just making fun of him and he's, he's not here to defend himself. So that's fine. He's educated. He's a lot. Uh, <laughs> they also did uh, Remember Me way back when. Yeah, yeah. Um, that so, had potential. Uh, Crypt Shadow's asking, what game is this on screen? This is Banishers. Uh, this is Banishers Ghosts of New Eden. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I I started it. I've made it a good chunk through. I just got to, like, that that forest village, which I guess isn't very far in, apparently, because it's, like, a 30-hour game. <laughs> yeah, that's what I realized. Yeah, like, I got to bad. a certain section where it's like, oh, 
there's like a bunch more world. Yeah. No, um, don't you hate that? I, <laughs> Two I've percent been, completed. Uh. <laughs> I've been enjoying it, but it just hasn't hooked me yet. I mm. and I don't know if there's like a point. If I just play farther, it's going to like it's going to hook me more. I think part of it was and it's, it's all right. It's not a spoiler at all to say that uh, the premise is. Uh, what's the two main characters' names? It, uh, Antea and Red. R- yeah, Red and Red and Antea. It's a love story. Antea dies very early on. The whole, all the marketing is based around this. It's not a spoiler at all. Yeah, yeah it's not a spoiler. Summary. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. Uh, right there in the summer. There my my problem with the game is like it didn't build up their relationship at all before it gets there, and I just have no emotional connection to the characters. Mm-hmm. And it seems like the game wants me to build it as the game goes on. But, yeah, you are you are 100% right in that regard. I felt yeah. exactly the same way in that they kind of drop you into this very like intimate relationship. Yeah. And then when that moment happens where she dies, I'm not as connected to them and the decision making that they're, they're doing outside of the fact that it was like, well, he seems very invested in this relationship. <laughs> yeah. So as if I'm going to role yeah. play, then maybe Red would do this, maybe Red would do that. Um, but to their credit, after the fact, like after they get, you know, the intro out of the way, which is a little slow, to be honest, but after they get that out of the way, I do very much think they do a good job of building up kind of their connection mm-hmm. with the fact that you make a decision on what you're going to do about yeah. the fact that she's now dead. Yeah. And then everything after that point feels like really, like really real in terms of like uh, your uh, investment in their relationship with each other. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, yeah, I think it, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's kind of like going back to like Last of Us Part Two thing where you know just maybe the pacing is off a little bit in the beginning. Um, but sure. I, you know, I definitely know what you're talking about. Like when you do like the whole premise of the game is basically like, <laughs> do you do you let her go to the afterlife or do you bring her back to life? And so mm-hmm. there's a lot of like, wait, uh, what moral... happens if I'm like choose to carry on and more mourn her? Live well, either life. either either way, you have to do something to make that happen. Oh, so like, okay. it's, so it's not like the game ends <laughs> because you say yeah, like, all right, yeah. well, you're dead now, honey. Uh, yeah, I've let it go. <laughs> but yeah, like, you you decide to do one of those two things, okay. and like, they really they really sell you. I feel like on either of those decisions being the decision that that character could make. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's really well written. Um, I really like the writing in the game and like the. The moral dilemmas. I'm sure when if Yasu reviews the game, he's gonna say like they're kind of dumb, but I, I they're like that perfect kind of sense of gray area where like, man, I really hate this guy, but I should do this. Right. Or it's I like shouldn't there, do this. there were reasons behind their actions. Yeah. As dis- despite how despicable there were. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, we're and like we're we're kind of bouncing around a little bit because we're trying not to spoil anything if you are gonna play it. But like, mm-hmm. if you like don't nods like writing in games like. This is, I think it's a step up because, like, I did not like Life is Strange 2. Right yeah, I'm in the same at camp. All. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not a fan of that either. Uh, the, what was the most recent one called? Uh, True Colors was, eh. And, <laughs> and this, and this feels like a, a big step up for them from, you know, if you liked Vampire and the Moral Dilemmas in that game, you would, I think you would really dig Vanishers. Uh, and the, and, you know, it's still like, it still feels, it has like the graphics of a AAA game, but, the gameplay itself is still very much in that double A realm. So like the combat is serviceable. I don't think it's great. Yeah, it feels like a, a lighter God kind of war, war, maybe. Yeah. Yep. But um, but it's not bad. Like I have fun with it. It's just like enemy variety could stand to to be a bit deeper. Like they they take their time introducing newer enemies over the course of the game, but mm-hmm. like we said, like there's a lot of game. <laughs> So yep. you do spend chunks fighting the same kind of enemies until you reach a certain point where they start adding some of the newer ones. Yep. Uh, but you, uh, but combat never felt like boring to me. And if you've been wanting a more uh, linear focused adventure like this, this is up your alley. It's not a not a gigantic open world where you have to do everything. It's it's not gigantic. It is kind of big as hell though. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, but it like leads you through it. It's just not, you know, it's not going anywhere, sure, do yeah. anything type of game. It, it feels like a you'll... big connected. Uh, yeah, linear world somehow. I was surprised by that. I feel like there's a there's a lot of uh, like crevices that you crawl through and <laughs> and tunnels yeah. that you go underneath. Oh, my favorite. But no, Eric, but the no world spoiler. does feel big, even though like mm-hmm. it's kind of sectioned off into like neat little pieces. Yep. 
Uh, so those, those, yeah, between that and Helldivers 2, those are the two games I've been playing. And yeah, I haven't, I haven't played enough to like fully, fully recommend Banishers yet, but I, I like what I have played for the most part, even if it's the right, like the character connection that hasn't entirely hooked me yet, where I'm like, I gotta go, I gotta go play this, you know, tonight and finish it kind of thing. Yeah, I would say if, there, if you have any level of intrigue about like the story and the concept, give it a try because I I'm having a good time with it. Um, and I, in, in addition, I will I do want to point out that the the setting they picked is kind of a uh, a selling point, one that I wasn't expecting. It's basically set in like colonial America, where like a bunch of like English pilgrims and stuff have come over and are trying to make a living. Um, and it's pseudo historically accurate in that some of the sentiments of people are what you would expect but they they do cool or at least interesting narrative ways to get around what most people would probably look at and be like oh well that's unbelievable because this wouldn't happen the fact that antea is like a a black woman for example who is like kind of in a position of prestige in that area Early on, it like you can see that there's a little bit of uncomfortableness from some of the other characters that she meets, and in order to address the fact that that would be the situation everywhere, she dies and is a ghost. <laughs> so like most <laughs> most of the rest of the game don't actually ever see her, but she's still prominent in the story the whole time. So that sort of thing I felt like was really clever to kind of get around that. Hmm. Damn, six cents, man. Again, for us, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? I see here. Uh, it was uh, three days ago, I believe, the next fest ended. And I went through so many goddamn games, but that was mostly what I was doing. Just like none, th nothing but those. I guess the standout ones uh, worth talking about right now would be Ingression. It's a little cu cute little platformer with some like portal action going on there. Portal being like the actual game, but it's got a interesting sci-fi, like kind of schlock sci-fi. Um, time travel kind of plot going on here that I was like, all right, you got me. You got me. It probably won't go anywhere. Interesting. But like, you got me with that. Sure. Uh, Children of the Sun. That's everybody's been. Yeah, I played about a little of that, that too. Yeah. Yep. It's a, a sniping puzzler. I freaking loved sniper flash games when I was little. Uh, the Stickmen ones. I don't know why. I was just obsessed with those things. Yeah, everyone like the Stickmen were dope. Right, like it was so good, so fun. That just figuring a, uh, out, like you know, figuring out your target, how to draw them out, blah 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 blah. Great stuff. You get one bullet, and you got psychokinetic powers, and trying to get that thing going around. So it feels like the start of Wanted with that little sniper thing. <laughs> and then uh, what else we got here? Uh, one one game that I will mention, but absolutely was horrible to play, like actually terrible, was Umbra Claw. This is a game where you play as a little kitten. And you die. And you go to the afterlife. And you're trying to get home to your owner. Well, you cats have nine lives. Every time, and, and, and you stealth through this afterlife place, right? As a cat, you can slink through, slink through these like small quarters and get away from the enemy and whatnot. Uh -huh. But every time you take damage, you lose a life, but you gain an animal power. So now you have like a tiger claw, right? Or you have like this boar attack or whatever you... You gain, you do get stronger. You get the double jump from like losing three lives because of, of of an eagle. But each time you lose a life, you get closer to running out, which means you get closer to being more feral. Your strongest form is when you have three lives and like you turn into this huge beast of a cat thing that operates in a in a completely different way than the old stealthing cat. And the whole story is you're trying to get home without getting touched too much, so that you can get back to your owner. Otherwise. You go feral and you lose your cat manity, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> and then you can't get back to it. So uh, this is the first time where I found like, yes, finally, a game where as you suck, you get stronger, but the narrative is 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 close. It's just nice enough there to be like, okay, yeah, I feel like I'm I'm losing myself, even though it is it is helping. Like I'm not going to be able to get back to my owner. This is uh, very interesting. I like but that. God. Uh, th this one of those that's like, as a critic, I'll keep an eye on, but ain't nobody touching this game. Um, the controls, <laughs> god awful. Worst things I've ever felt. Like I was retching just playing with it. It's just not playable. It is not playable with the controls like, that they offer. And then, well, the, like, what, the like, what did they do? Like, how like do you buggy. mess that up so bad? I don't know. I, I had the controller and I press up and the character goes to the right. And then I press <laughs> down and then he crouches, sure. But then he's stuck that way unless I smack, unless I like wiggle left, right. I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah, and then I go to jump, but he attacks and all, all this other nonsense. No, it was a <laughs> horrible layout. 
and the rebinding on that thing was just not possible. So I'm like, if you what, can just fix that. What was this game called again? Uh, Umbra Claw. Umbra Claw. Umbra Claw. Yeah. That sounds like a really cool concept, but that Art's sucks. Nice. Yeah, yeah that, that sucks that they fumbled the gameplay. Maybe that's why uh, Stray oh, took is. away all the control from you. Maybe, yeah. Uh, because it's just hard to, to do cat controls in games. Umbra Claw. Yeah, it's, it's Eric's got it right there. So it is. Uh, it is mostly just a, a platformer, but it it has that sense of kind of I guess like Metroidvania. -y -y it looks like it was like the art looks like it was colored in by crayon. Isn't it great? It's neat. I, I like it. it. Yeah, I like the look. So like the story, story's cool. Uh, the the action to it. I've always wanted games to experiment with a sort of like yeah. As you lose, you get stronger. But will it be worth it? Uh, it was not worth playing it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone just brought up Sifu because, yeah, it actually has a similar, oh, yeah, well, yeah, not yeah, similar, does. but a parallel mechanic where, like, yeah, you, you die and you get stronger, but then there are also other trade-offs, whatever. Like, you can't learn as many moves, whatever, <laughs> as an old man. Yeah, the arthritis starts to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, no, there, was, uh, there were a few other ones, but I would say those are the ones that took up most of my time. There was one, it was kind of like, um, kind of like an escape game sort of called gloomy juncture it's a uh, noir aesthetic sure but it's it's all all of this weird um escape room stuff is happening in the split second where your character took a bullet to the head so oh. it's it's a psychological thriller at the same time and i'm like huh. what is going on yeah it's, it's really it's weird enough for me to just go all right i'll see you through and then the writing's kind of nice so, yeah <laughs> uh, um, I, I think it was like old Hunter mentioned. I played Liz Fanga is uh, like that that clone. Oh, the the right time on. clone yeah, thing, yeah. right? Yeah, one one too bad. It was uh, it was okay. I felt like I never needed the clones though more than one, anyways, because I could kill like ninety percent of everything with the <laughs> you first. Could beat everything. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. disappointing. Yeah, I thought it would be a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I guess yeah, the promo stuff for that showed yeah. like a, a big number of clones. I was wondering like how many you could actually like make and make use of in that game. Uh, it's like five, I think. You, you five, can, is that the max? Yeah, it's about like five of them. If you run out after that, like it's it's game over. But I never needed more than two. So, Dang. do did that have like difficulty options? Not in the demo, not that no. I not that I recall. But it also it did have a sort of like after you're done with it the first time there'd be a portal that opens up and it would challenge you to get a better time, right? Mm -hmm. Even with just two though, I was I was rocking it by like ten seconds. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm just a god gamer like that. No, I think they need to <laughs> tweak their difficulties just a little bit. <laughs> make, make make you really like you want to use it instead of just sort of like, it feels yeah, like, like uh, I two lives and then three for just excess. I don't know. Like, I probably shouldn't do this, but oftentimes if I get, I like, I'll read the description of the difficulty options uh, for a game. And if the game tells me that the intended experience is not normal, but instead like hard or whatever, I will pick hard. Yeah, me too. But I was like only Hi-Fi Rush that did that. Right. Yeah. Like a couple, a couple games will tell you like, Hey, normal is actually not, yeah. What like that's where most people will feel comfortable, but this is the real thing. Like, all right, I'll I'll do that then. And like other times, like I'll just anticipate it. I'll just be like, this game probably needs uh, needs <laughs> needs to be run on hard mode. <laughs> yeah. And to just play it on hard mode. But like, because yeah, I feel like I, I I would get a very different sentiment out of my enjoyment of a game if it is too easy in that way. And sometimes they they will aim normal to be a little too easy. And a, a demo seems like prime ground to do that. Like they're like the demo is just going to be a lot more forgiving. Yeah, I get a sense that they do that because um, they have a leaderboards to just like you know compare time with other people. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like games that do have those sort of leaderboards, they they want you to push to the max out of just pride of just being better than your friends instead of actually having a better difficulty. And, and yeah, it, I was like, yeah, yeah. Remi that reminds me, Casey. Uh, the next hidden gems, you guys need to play Remnants of Nazeth. Remnants oh, of Nazeth? Yes, it's that, that grapple hook platforming game I keep telling you about. Ooh. Art's nice. Uh, Whoa. Hey, yo. That would be schmoovin'. Yeah, it's a, it's a, what's a speedrunner game, but it's, it's like. Is uh, it like touch the oh, ground okay. and die kind of game? Kinda. God it's, hard, it's hard. 
But if you can like if you can get skillful at it, it's freaking neat. Look at that. Yeah, I'll give this a shot. That looks cool. I like I'm, it. I'm putting but it yeah, on the no. channel because we forget. So, Every time I bring it up, we this forget. This reminds me of uh uh Sanabi <laughs> that mm, I just yeah. played. Mm -hmm. There you go. That'd be perfect for it. Yeah, no, that's uh yeah, I get that's that all shot. I've been, that's all I've been playing. I don't know how many demos are actually on the next fest to to <laughs> play all of them. I have, a, I, I have, a... I've, I've read all of them. I downloaded over a hundred, but only like five ended up being like okay. I have a uh, con confession to make. That's probably going to make the chat mad at me. You played like two demos during the next fest. Uh, no, I actually played only the demos. I only played were on the the stream that we did. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the confession though. The confession is instead of playing good games like Persona 3 Reload or uh Grand Blue Fantasy Relink or Banishers or anything this weekend, this past weekend. We're playing Garfield Racer. Uh <laughs> no, I spent most of my weekend playing Suicide Squad. <laughs> How'd you feel? Like, why? While you were playing that, I yeah, I thought like you it, didn't like that game. It's a I decent zone out like game. It, game, it is it? a very yep. That's exactly what it was. It was just a decent zone out game. I didn't feel like thinking. I didn't feel like doing anything. I just felt like clicking buttons and shooting things. And yeah, yeah. and Suicide Squad scratched that itch for me. It is. <laughs> like there's there's those games that do challenge you. Those shooters that do challenge you all the time. But some of them you're just kind of yeah. like want to go into auto mode. It's like. When cooking, there's a difference between like I'm gonna try out this new recipe versus like oh, I'm just gonna do this thing that I'm <laughs> yeah. so used to. Spaghetti with butter. My <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm gonna chop the spaghetti <laughs> up. But... <laughs> yeah, I like. I don't. I don't know what came over me. I just like. I just didn't want to. put my like. I'm still intrigued by Suicide Squad. Like I haven't been able to uh, get hands on it it's myself. Like. I it is not a good game. Like I do not like it because I think it's a good game. You ain't gotta be and I don't and right. I don't I don't like it either. Like I <laughs> when I play it, I'm like actively like this is stupid. I tweeted about it. I was like, how how did you make this entire story based game without a single mission to do in the game? They're all just this like guy. time trial collect a thon missions. There's no design in this game whatsoever. And yet, like the gameplay, like the shooting and the movement mechanics feel really good, and it's and it's like the one thing keeping me interested in continuing to play. Sometimes it. that's all you need. It's, it's your it comfort is comfort food, man. That's it is. Well, no, it, it is very, uh, very that type of game is can be comfort food. But uh, food, Cass, Cassidy and Chet pointing, I was like, Nick, you complain about Suicide Squad, you end up liking it. Why? I said I didn't. I don't like it. Yeah, it just, every, every time something like after clearing an area, I do this. Just so you know, like people, so the game knows I don't like it. So. <laughs> like people ask me to take tequila shots with them. I don't like tequila, but I do it anyway. It's like Suicide Squad. Uh, you're, you're saying you've been peer pressured into playing Suicide what Squad? What the hell? I, I felt like it. Yes, I feel like if I'm going to keep oh. talking about this game, I need to experience the rest. Well, of I mean, it. that was the reason why I put Stray on my. <laughs> <laughs> on my two playlists. I knew it wasn't going to be that good, <laughs> but I can't keep talking trash about it unless I actually play it. So I, yeah. I understand. And like, like uh, the thing was, like, I, like people that I respect, like uh, Miles Dumpier, uh, who used to work at Windows Central, and like a couple other people um, that I've talked to were like, I don't know, it's kind of fun. And I was like, ah, did I just not put enough time into it? And nope, I put enough time into it. It's still the same garbage, but it's slightly good garbage, I guess. It just I mean, feels it feels good to play. That's what I'll give it. To me, it's like when I used to be hardcore in the shooters, like I used to just sit in aim trainers. Yeah. So like what? if nothing else, this yeah, yeah, you've never seen aim trainers? No. It's just a, a, yeah. a chamber and it'll like the, have a, a little dot dots. that goes up and it says like one and then another one that says two and they'll just get faster and you're just sitting there all day just going tink 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 tink. There's so a built in aim trainer in Siege. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to love that. I don't things. need that. I'm the god at Siege. <laughs> Fair enough. You yeah. never, never used it before. So, like, looter shooters to me are just like, uh, yeah, this is numbers going up, and there you go. Well, you turned off the numbers, so that's the real crazy <laughs> part. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no numbers, no problem. No, no numbers, you know, a little bit of loot. It's if nothing else, it's we want something like this. We're willing to support this kind of thing. So, like, you know, actually put some love into it. You're give, yeah, I, I, I think it's mostly I'm just fascinated by it. I'm fascinated by the fact that there is no scripted mission in that entire game. Mm. And like I, I am an, I am like fascinated by how this game was in development for seven years. And the 
best mission they best mission design they can come up with is collect this, save these three people over and over again. Escort missions with a truck that drives five miles per hour through a fucking war zone. It, it, that's it. Like that's it. That's the missions of the game. There is no there is no linear mission design in the game anywhere. It's amazing to me. It's it's like you know you play mm. you like you play Destiny right and it's like yeah it's the same missions over and over again but you still get unique environments to go through you go you know you follow a directed path and everything and, yeah and and the loop of like shooting yeah. in that game just feels really fun like that yeah like that uh like you definitely zone out and just <laughs> spend hours on a moon yeah. running. <laughs> Run around just shooting stuff in the head, but there's also, it. but it's also got its like very memorable scripted moments, like when you face sure. like the first big bosses or or like these gauntlet runs or whatever, or even platforming sections where you got to go through lasers and floors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because it feels Suicide good Squad has yeah. none of that. <laughs> Every single like, go watch Skillless review. He has the best review on this game. Every single mission is shooting things on a rooftop. And you never touch the ground. You never see all the detail on the ground. You are always just on rooftops. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. And somehow mm -hmm. I, I, will, I will end up finishing that campaign because I'm near the end. It's only like eight hours. And the story really? is like the, the story. Yeah, it's only like eight hours. And the story is like the wow. one good thing I found about the game. Like the cutscenes are really well done. I kind of like killing the Justice League because they are like they've actually did a good job like making them just assholes. And it's great. <laughs> 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 but like it, and it's not even a spoiler, like Superman's in the game, right? There's an entire scene of him beating the shit out of him and Wonder Woman beating the shit out of each other. And that that there is no gameplay in any of it. The only part of that mission that you do is escorting a van. That's it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Amazing. And and they're Jeez. like they're they're off fighting and doing stuff and you never see it. You just hear the people talking about like they're fighting. And then you see some debris fly around or something like that, but that's it. Man, what happened to this game? <laughs> um, no, like uh, the green the Green Lantern fight is dumb as hell. You just shoot like he makes all of his uh, you know, his little light fixture things to shoot you or whatever, and you shoot those and they'll shoot him and then they kill him, hmm. and that's it. <laughs> it's just why it's, it's wild. It's just legitimately wild how bad the game is. Uh, I'm kind of with Willem Dafoe, you know. Like after a long day of work, sometimes you just want to pew pew and see some stupid th stuff. Yeah, you ain't, got the, you ain't got the bandwidth for like a Martin Scorsese film, you know. Or Willem Dafoe said that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was talking. He was talking about uh, because he makes like goofy movies, right? And he mm. says it's hard to get an audience to watch sort of like deeper films because you know they're tired and they just don't have the like the, the capacity or desire for it, so they just mm. like, turn on Netflix and watch essentially garbage. And I'm like, mm. yeah. He gets it. Like, so he was like, so problem. being that's, that garbage, is that, is that was that his message? I mean, to the that's, kids? that's the problem with like Apple, where I, I'm like, I just want to watch a little casual show. No, they're all bangers and they all take your brain, all of it. I'm like, can I just turn it off for a second? A little, a little trash, maybe not like Netflix, right? Or it's just all garbage. Yeah, like Netflix this isn't all garbage, it's all garbage. <laughs> it's and got the a lot of garbage, it's all, yeah. all garbage. And the Irishman, I, I'm, I'm not watching that again. I didn't, I didn't include it in my my video on Suicide Squad just because like it, it's a whole nother direction I would have taken the video in. But like this Suicide Squad game could have worked. All you had to do was follow the Gears of War model. <laughs> like Gears of War, all you do is shoot things over and over again, but you're in scripted, linear, different looking missions with fun action, memorable moments. Yeah, the, the set pieces that kind of set it up. Like it yeah, was and the, the character the Call dynamics. of Duty, like third person yeah, gameplay versus first exactly. person. And the character dynamics and everything with Suicide Squad, great. I don't know. I don't know how you messed it up because like the story and the characters are great. Everything else. Mm. Find any uh, cool loot combos? No. Oh, I, really? I could give. I I don't give a flying shit about the loot. Oh. I look. I I when we bought the. I thought. I don't know what we're gonna do with that game, so I bought like the premium edition. So that we had, so we had the, the 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 live service stuff. So if we cover it later, we have it right. Okay. But you get you get like 
three of the best weapons in the game just for buying that edition. So you don't even need a loot grind. I've had the same gun since the start of the game and it hasn't changed a thing. <laughs> it's just like Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. My starting sword is the one I'm so, keeping. I don't. I don't. On the other hand, I did put in some time to uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink in Casey. I don't know if you've played that yet. Uh, I've like, not started yet, no. Yeah, just that, the, that game is like a... The game was crazy. That, that game is like a painting on every place you go, and I like it. I like it a lot. Nice. I haven't played enough yet to like give any true thoughts on it. I, I want to play more of it this weekend, but like that is a beautiful game. It's One Piece. Yeah. What? It's One Piece. What's yeah, one it's, piece? It, the in it's like islands. One Piece. Yeah, yeah it's... Is it? I can't yeah, stand like I, I just mean, it's pretty similar. Like I, I'm, I'm still watching the anime. It is getting progressively worse. Oh no! <laughs> like it, is, I, I fell asleep watching the latest episode. It was so Wait, fucking where boring. Were what, huh? Where are you at? I'm in like the middle, close to the end. I think of season two for Grand Blue Fantasy. Oh, that no. I was thinking One Piece. Also. Oh no, no, not One where Piece. No, yeah. One Piece is great. <laughs> it's long. It's great. But uh, but this looks way more exciting than uh, the anime. Yeah, it's uh, it's very good, yeah, and the combat's very fun, very addicting. Mm-hmm. Weirdly, <laughs> but that's all I got. Yeah, I heard someone compare it to Monster Hunter, and I and I did not see that before, and like I, I really the don't see it end, in gameplay. But... The end game is apparently a lot like Monster Hunter. Okay, because it's, it's it's very it's very actually very linear campaign it's not like open world or anything like that right yeah like it's kind of level base and then like, uh-huh. you fight like big bosses and so i think yep. it's the big boss stuff that they're saying like oh this is like monster hunter yes which piqued my interest because because like, what i played felt you know very light like i it wasn't super deep but like it was definitely beautiful and flashy it actually it actually gets the combat gets pretty deep really surprisingly enough but yeah I, yeah this is on my list i want to give this a try uh mm-hmm. as soon as i can all right, uh, we got a few more super chests to get through before we wrap up. But uh, Motman forty three five dollars says Nick, what was the process like for getting Good Blood on board? Did he reach out to you or vice versa? I reached out to Good Blood. Yeah, I don't remember what for. I think we we had a documentary project that I wanted his help with, and then we just got to talking, and then ended up he came to work for uh, Escapist for a few months, and then he was the very first person I I had to lay off before I got laid off, <laughs> fired. So. Thanks for that, gamers, making me an asshole, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> but hey, he's here now. He did all of our, he did all of our branding, and now he's got good blood running, and you can go watch his new ep- newest episode on Alan Wake 2 uh, right after this podcast. Yeah, he like. makes an absolutely great point about the, the way that game story is laid out. There's a lot of people that are mad at him in the comments for apparently nitpicking the board, but I, I've had the same complaint. Like, what am I doing with this board? No, yeah, I fully understood what he meant. Like, <laughs> yeah. his his suggestion made a lot of sense. There there were good counters to that argument, though, that I saw in the comments, like, in terms of, like, mm. accessibility and people coming back to the game after, like, resting and whatnot. Like, that made a lot of sense. But, like, yeah. uh, I can't deny, like, I, I liked his idea a lot. Yeah, well, as I was, like, I feel like there's... Yeah, I, I mean, his point is kind of remedy... Remedy had their story to tell, but also give you mechanics that make you think like otherwise, like that you get to be part of the story. Sure. And yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I kind of wish I do kind of wish they had done more of like. Just the, uh, you know, if you put these things in the wrong order or something like that, then the events in the world change or something like that would have been kind of neat. But, you know, it's a much more ambitious game than what they were what? making. So what? Yeah. that sounds like what everyone tells me. Uh, no, it, yeah, no, it does not work that way at all. There, there are oh, specific, you... there are specific points in the game where like you have to piece things together and you can put them correct incorrectly. Sure, but it's it's not that deep. Oh my god! Everybody was here like you can just rewrite no. reality, and I was like, I am now twenty again. Who, my knees who told don't you that? Hurt. Yeah, who told everyone? You that? <laughs> everyone, everyone talks <laughs> up this game. I was like, I don't fathom how it could work. But just like, but everything goes away. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> uh, Nils Enthusiast donates two dollars. Says hi, Casey. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Money well spent. Uh, there were Dr. Esquire donates five dollars. Says Nick. There are support groups I can recommend if you need help. I don't know when you sent that donation. That could have been for any point. Of the... of this <laughs> I think Why it was the... for the the Suicide Squad <laughs> play. Red Wings talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it could have been for any certain time. It could have been for the Xbox conversation. You did mention Twitter earlier. It yeah. could have been for Twitter. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, ah, I don't know. Says that Suicide Squad replaced Nick's Twitter hate. 
did it. I don't you're know. You're going to hate that instead of Twitter? Oh. I think Nick has enough hate for all those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got plenty of hate to go around. Multitask, yeah. Uh, multi-hate. Uh, Gildan Isaac donates one dollar says, I don't get games as a service hate. Is it the greed of forcing you to play forever that the gameplay can't help to last that long or something else? I think it's the frustration that like a lot of these games look really cool and then just are nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the miss the mismatch of that service on top of what otherwise could have been a decent gameplay experience. Like there are games that absolutely benefit from being a game as a service. And there are games that are trying to shoehorn it in in order to continue to monetize what otherwise would have been kind of a one and done gameplay experience. And yeah, those and are the ones that people get annoyed like, about. Well, it's also like throwing, I think a lot of it is, I think a lot of the games that people hate as games of service are the ones where Rocksteady or Crystal Dynamics or whoever are primarily known for single player games. Mm -hmm. They have an expectation that they're going to continue making those. And then they're like, oh yeah, we're going to make a live service game. It's like, why? Why? <laughs> like, when you think of Suicide Squad, I don't think of a live service game. I think of like a comic yeah, book like it does, story it game. Doesn't make sense, right? Like, it's, same thing it's with Avengers. Not a good fit. And, yeah, like, like these games can only be fun for someone. Punching things is only fun for someone. Yeah. Uh, Tsunami Doucher, five dollars. <laughs> Using the elemental leveling system from Quest sixty four could work well with an Avatar title. Are any of you familiar with that system? No. Uh, Quest I. Quest 64 is one of the only JRPGs that I played and liked, but it's also terrible. Like Quest 64 is not a good game, but the elemental level system was, it's essentially the, the thing that Skyrim or the Bethesda games oh. do, where if you use oh. a certain element, it keeps getting stronger and then you eventually get the strongest version of it by using it. And Quest 64 was broken because you only needed to use like two of the four elements you had to like finish the entire game. Mm -hmm. hmm. But um, yeah, that, that that actually does make perfect sense for an avatar game if it was like an action adventure thing, because like you're learning to be better at your craft, like your your martial art, like your bending ability. So yeah, if you're an avatar and you use a bunch of one thing, then you unlock the next version of it. But also story hmm. beats. So I don't know. That has to go hand in hand, I guess. Hmm. It's a good yeah, idea. You're, you're gonna get your gotcha game. And you're gonna like it. <laughs> Look, I like Genshin Impact, so just make a good game around the gotcha stuff, and I'm fine. Yep. Like, I'm not going to be mad at. Let it. me eat around it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a gambling uh, problem. Like that stuff does not affect me. Yeah, that's the we always we always end up having yeah. that discussion. Like, I do, like, and it's just not enough to to get it there, so I don't end up spending money. I, yeah, I. Yeah, the only game that gets me is Marvel Snap somehow, and I know. And, and I, you spend money in that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that dang, bro. That's yeah. cuz it's it's gotten it's taken your toilet time, man. You got to You know back. what it is? Every time like I I will wait to go to the toilet until that game is loaded up and then I will go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah, have you have logged yourself does it make you feel a poo coming? <laughs> like as soon as you as soon as you boot it up, like oh no. Yeah, oh, no. Uh, 10, my butthole's connected to the toilet Wi-Fi. 10:30 a.m. time to load up Marvel Snap and take my data shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Heavy Defunks uh, reminded me about Halo Season Two. Yes, I was I was uh, obligated to talk about that. I think from a super chat, in uh, it's not a good sign that I forgot to even talk about it. I mean, uh, there aren't that many episodes out yet, right? Two two episodes, another episode out tonight. Um, what I will say is, <laughs> they started off on the right note because the intro theme to the fucking show has Halo music attached to it now. Of so they didn't even do that with the first season. No. Wow. This is, this is baloney ass. Uh, bland ass. Fucking wow. Digital. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, it was just a generic sci-fi track in the last that one. Is a, that is a gimmick. So they actually, they actually bought, um, brought Bear McCurry in, who did the God of War soundtrack. And he's actually doing all the soundtracks now um, to do the music for the show. And so the music's a step up, and Halo, like Halo isn't Halo without its music, so they fixed that. Uh, the action scenes and the writing are actually quite a bit better. Uh, the action scenes of shaky cam out the ass though. And I, it, I can't stand it, but it, in general, I don't know. In general, the show just feels better. Like it, it it's better written. You can tell that almost immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, there seems to be better dynamic between the characters. And it's also like building towards something where like the first season just kind of meandered a lot. And like, just, you know, chief, chief, humanized chief, show us chief's butt cheeks. Chief has sex, like all this bullshit. 
uh, season two is very much building up from taking actually a lot of stuff from the books. So if you've read the Eric Nyland books, there's actually a lot of stuff being pulled from that and possibly other books too, like Ghost of Onyx and even possibly Cole Protocol. Um, yeah, that's insider baseball for those of you that have read Halo books, but uh, there's this possibly stuff in there like tying a lot more of the actual canon lore together. Uh, and and it's building up to the fall of reach and so like you know if you've seen the trailers like clearly you know there's gonna be some big battles ahead and stuff like that so yeah i don't know i think i think you could honestly honest to god skip over all of halo season one and just go to season two and, and you'll just be jump fine. right in this yeah i think, yeah, I, think I i think i will do that <laughs> like, <laughs> I do just, like one of those just, three month things once the season is up yeah, you might you might watch like a quick recap of what happened in Halo season one, but you really probably could skip it and just go to two and you'll be happier for it. So but you yeah, missed I, that on Master Chief Cheeks, dog. Master yeah. Chief. <laughs> and, well, and like hey, a lot of people online are like, he takes off his helmet too much. He takes off his helmet too much. Like if you read the books, he has his helmet off a lot. So it just that doesn't bother me, even as a huge Halo fan. Hmm. All right. But, yeah. I don't know. It, it's the more they pull the books, the happier I will be because the books are good stuff and whatever they were doing with season one can go fuck itself. I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd be happy if it just turns around and then like kind of forgets that you know season one happened and then it's just, this is just a good show now <laughs> from yeah. season two onward. It's still, it's still like, as, as a big Halo fan, it's still going to be weird for a lot of people because like it expands the Halo universe a lot from what you've seen in the games. Cause like you, you're tied to master chief throughout the entire game. Right. But there is like, if you read the books, there's a lot of different planets. There's a lot of different cultures and stuff like that, that they've really dug into. Uh, so it, it takes some, it takes some getting used to that. Like this isn't just master chief landing on a halo ring and kicking ass. It's, it's a much more uh, grounded, I guess, take on halo and, and very much interested in like the politics of it. And also, like the, the thesis around the the Spartan program and how fucked up it actually is. Yeah, because <laughs> so, it is fucked up. Yeah, it's really it's fucked super, up if you read the books. So. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, and I, and I do like that they're exploring a lot of that as a fan of the books. So, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna see how I feel about the episode tonight. But like, I didn't. I was actively engaged and watching season episode one and two. So it was all right. All right. I mean, that's better than before. <laughs> like, all yeah. right, it's better than trash. Yeah, I didn't say so. Take it. All right. Well, anything else, guys? Before we wrap it up, uh, I think that's it for now. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in to episode ten of Firelink. Uh, thanks for watching or listening. If you listen to this later on podcast services. Uh, don't forget that if you are not subscribed to us on Patreon, you can do that at the five dollar tier and get all of these podcasts completely ad free. Uh, and then we got one more super chat from Ah, donate this five dollars. Says, okay, Eric, no need to read this out, Nick. This can be a silent donor for Eric's Photoshop work. I can't not read it out because I can't read it without reading it out. I don't know if that made sense. I mean, I understood what you meant, but okay. I also don't know if that made sense. <laughs> that means that means I have been on four hours of streams today, and I'm tired now. <laughs> yeah, uh, always vet them so you don't end up saying some really <laughs> sus stuff. Uh, Get Sean Sean Harriman says they sent in a super chat. Did I miss one? I might I might have I might have missed a, a green green member chat. Let me scroll. Uh, oh yeah, Eric, Eric, Eric. Uh, three months. It's not a donation. Oh, uh, uh hey, Sean Harriman, member for two months. Says next latest four K by Planet Earth three plus abyss for me. Uh, Oppenheimer. Oh, there you go. I haven't watched it. I still haven't watched Top Gun Maverick. I still have a lot of unopened four K movies on my shelf. I haven't gotten around to. Good lord, it just likes how they feel. How they yes. look on the case. Uh, and then also John Aldrich, uh, $5 super chat from earlier in the stream. This is a donation towards Adventures Night Season 4. Well, thank you. Adventures Night thank Season you. 4 is funded, so you just helped fund our GDC trip, which we leave for right after Adventures Night Season 4. I'll be gone half of March, by the way, so have fun without me. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to wrap up there. I forget how Marty wraps these things up, so thanks for, thanks for tuning in and watching and listening. And... Uh, we will see you back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central you, for Design Delve. You got you to gotta tell them, yeah, where all the stuff is. That's how he wraps it up. Uh, well, you're here at Second and Wednesday, so you know where all the stuff is. <laughs>
There you go. You can follow me on. You don't want to follow me on Twitter. You can follow KC on Twitter at Sigma Gears Nine. You can follow Frost on Twitter at the other Frost. Uh, only rugby. No, I don't and, use it. And then if you Google Xbox drama, you can find all the the lovely uh, dumb thumbnails I talked about earlier. If you want something to watch today, so uh, Jumbly one says stream tomorrow. I don't think so. I don't think anybody. Marty's out. What do we do? We usually stream on Fridays. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't like think release yeah. games or something. I don't think we normally do. No. Yeah, I don't think Second Wind does. Me and my fiance do though. 7 oh, p.m. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time over on my Twitch channel. We're gonna be starting uh, Return of the Oberden because we finished Stray. Ooh. Yeah. We're gonna be detectives. Join us. Your insurance agents. <laughs> That's what you oh right, are. yeah. Have I mean, insurance agents not, do detective have you not work. Played that game before? I've not played it yet. No. All right, be, fit, be ready to feel very stupid the entire time you play. Get paper, I mean, that's just me every day. <laughs> get, get paper, pencil. That's all I'm yeah. saying. You're going to want it. That I mean, that's why my belt. fiance is going to be with me. Like, she's go. the brains of our operation. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need to go back and play that game. I played it a bunch, and then I quickly, and then I suddenly dropped it, and never went back. It's like three hours, Nick. What? Yeah, but it's is like. It, is it that short, really? It, well, it's as long as. Well, if he guess everything wrong, yeah. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> I didn't even know you could get that ending, Nick. My my favorite my favorite thing about that game is back on the Escapist show. Jack saying he played it and he hated it because it told him it was he was stupid. Oh, it was Jack. That's right. That's who said yeah. that. <laughs> so funny. He's like, I really liked it, and then it told me it was stupid. And I didn't yeah. like it anymore. <laughs> if, if you if you solve it That's incorrectly, uh, it'll just be like, what the hell was that? <laughs> That's really. I'm actually excited now. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah, see y'all. Bye. <laughs> sure.